All right. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Welcome to a very special two-year anniversary edition of the Mutant Experience Podcast. I am Mutant XP, and this is episode 46 of the Mutant Experience Podcast, the only podcast uh, devoted to covering uh, the American Third Strike scene. And so with me tonight, two very special guests, and you know I've been meaning to have the two of you on for quite some time, but uh, I wanted to make it a special occasion, and I can't think of no better special occasion than today, the two-year anniversary of the very first Jazzy Circuit ranking event, which would not have been possible if it were not for the hard work and efforts of the two men that you see on your screen. Uh, my guest tonight on the Mutant Experience podcast, we have Mash Legs uh, on my Right? Yeah. Or on my go. left? Right here, <laughs> just right here. Swear, right? It's like <laughs> okay, so mash, mash legs. Mash legs. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the Brady Bunch intro. Mash <laughs> legs. Like that, yeah. Mash legs <laughs> no, 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 and no. and Fody. What's up? Of of the Scrub series. And so welcome guys. Thank you so much uh for taking time out of your busy weekday schedules to come on this very special edition of the Mean Experience podcast. Of course. How's it going? Uh first of all. Uh, before we get started, just wanted to extend my best wishes to you and all of your friends and your loved ones uh, during uh, this ongoing pandemic. We're all trying to get by, and so I hope all of you guys are, are staying safe. And so, what's going on, guys? Are you guys excited about today? It is the two-year anniversary of the very first Jazzy ranking event, and you guys had a lot to do with that, obviously. That's and great, so, yeah, yeah, I can't believe it, it. It honestly doesn't feel like it's been two years. No, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> it definitely doesn't feel like it's been. Two it years. feels like yesterday, man. But yeah, it feels great to be here, especially you know, given the circumstances. Mm -hmm. It feels it feels good. And so, obviously, we're going to be talking about that first Jazzy ranking event, which, uh, for those of you who may uh, not uh, have known, uh, occurred uh, on uh, two years to this date. August 25th, 2018, at a uh, event that you guys put together yourselves called uh, the Paradigm Grand Prix in La Crosse, uh, Wisconsin. And so, uh, obviously, later in the podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about that event. Uh, and, you know, because I'm really kind of interested, because you guys are fairly new to the scene, you know, I'm really really looking forward to kind of picking your brain and kind of learning kind of the story behind not just, you know, the first Jazzy ranking event and how you guys got involved in third strike, but also, you know, the entire event as well, because, you know, uh, a paradigm wasn't just a third strike tournament. You had multiple no, different tournaments. And so, you know, I'm really looking forward to picking you guys brains and kind of, you know, listen, hearing, uh, you know, your story and how that event was put together. But before we get to that, guys, you know, let's let's kind of start at the beginning. And so, you know, Fody, maybe you can get us started. You know, how did you get into uh, fighting games? Um, I, I I don't think Third Strike was your first fighting game, right? So, no, it, it definitely wasn't my first fighting game. Um, mm -hmm. I guess if we're going way back. Yeah, I, let's I, go I, way back. You want to go way back? <laughs> okay, way so, back. so way back, I was, you know, that guy who was playing Street Fighter, like, in his living room with his dad. Mm -hmm. You know, we played the Sega Genesis. I think it was Championship Edition. So we had Street Cha Fighter Champion too. Edition. Champion uh, I need to, Edition. I need to correct you. I know you're, you're a newer player, yep, yep, Cody. Yep. So you get a pa you get one Championship Edition pass. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But uh, shout-outs to Haas, Haas TX. <laughs> Follow him, twitch.tv slash Haas TX. He rages every time someone <laughs> says Championship Edition. Oh, I say Championship Because that is – because that is indeed not the name of the game. It is Champion Edition. But I think the version okay, you're referring okay. to is Special Champion Edition. For the oh, Mega, yeah. You for might the, be right. For, for the Mega Drive. It was the one that was Sega only Genesis. on the Mega Drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But yeah. no, that's, so that's like, that was like my very, like, you know, root beginnings. Uh, How old were you when you were, when, when you were playing this with your dad? Like, man, like I was probably like six, seven years old. So that means he must have been a Street Fighter fan. He was. He, I mean, he bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't buy it he was like was your dad player. like heavy into video fighting games or video games or uh not fighting games but he mm. he did play like hella video games he was always talking about like the arcades in the area because apparently we had arcades in the 80s in lacrosse which you know hyperspace i guess and some other places so he played mm. like in arcades there um he had always had like the atari and then he bought the nintendo like immediately when it came out so like i was fortunate to have like stuff just kind of chilling in the house you know Mm -hmm. uh, and then awesome. the Genesis came, and it was just like, you know, we were playing hella video games. We were playing Eternal Champions. You know, we had Mortal Kombat and stuff. So, you know, mm -hmm. the basics. 
But, mm-hmm. you know, I got my start, like, really early. So, like, I was always aware that Street Fighter was there. Um, obviously, it wasn't, like, a huge part of my life like it is now. Uh, but, yeah, so, like, after that, I mean, I think my next, like, big entry into fighting games was uh, when Street Fighter 4 dropped, actually. I, mm-hmm. We have Gaming Generations here in town. Shout out Gaming Generations. Uh, they run a lot of events across the country. You've heard the story. Uh, but, yeah, they, had, they used to have, like, an arcade room in their store, and they ran a tournament for Street Fighter 4. And I actually showed up, you know, Xbox 360 controller in hand. I didn't know anything about a stick. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had played the game when it dropped. I was, like, grinding it at my house, right? Like, you think you're doing all this good shit. You're playing online. Mm-hmm. And then I get there, you know, and, you know, the classic story. I just get mopped up by all these dudes who are doing real shit. And, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> at one point, I, had, I remember this like it was yesterday. I had pressed the Xbox guide button on the controller. And I had mm-hmm. stopped a match that I was in because I was mashing so hard trying to get Tatsu out or something, right? And then, like, the T.O. comes over. He's like, do you want to take the win or something? He said something to the other dude. And I was and I was like, I didn't even know what was going on. And then dude yeah. was like, nah, we'll just play it out. And I was like, all right, yeah. cool, let's go. <laughs> so that yeah, was I mean, it, right? Yeah. Like, I don't want to, you know, get, get, get a sidetrack too much. But, you know, kind of listening to you sort of describe your entry into uh, the FGC. Uh, and by the way, you know, I know a lot of us. You know, everyone in the FG, a lot of people in the FGC have had their fun with Street Fighter 4, right? You know, I mean, it's been the butt of many jokes. Right. But one thing that is undeniable uh, is that, you know, and, and as blasphemous as this may sound, I think as far as the Third Strike scene goes, I think Third Strike, in, in a weird way, owes a debt to Street Fighter 4. Because, because Capcom decided to kind of go a different direction and try to cater to a general audience. Right. It gave birth to so many future players. And the second thing I wanted that, 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 that kind of struck me as I was listening to you talk about your, your origin story. Right, right. Um, is that your entry into the tournament scene, I, I know a lot has been made recently about the differences between today's FGC and the FGC that I came up in. Right. But, like, dog, my experience was the same as yours. You know, <laughs> it's just, it was just a different, it was a different way. It was just going from a pond where you thought you were the shit. Yep. And then going to somewhere, another pond where you realize you are shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. Like it, it's the same. It's the same thing for me, right? Like I was, yep. I started in my college arcade. I thought I was good. Went to family. I realized <laughs> how bad I was. And yeah. it's, it's so. I mean, there's a lot. Yes, there, it, yes, today's FGC is different from this past FGC. But I mean, I feel like that's kind of the same thing that happened. I mean, no, for sure, something similar. It was yeah. super similar. The, the only difference being mine was like, you know, I got some scrubby wins online on Street Fighter 4 a few times mm-hmm. and I thought I was the shit, right? Mm-hmm. So I wasn't going yeah, to like that's everybody. Arcade, but... yeah. Right, exactly. The arcade environment too. You played against some random dude and you're like, okay, I can I can beat this guy. I can do a fireball. Mm-hmm. He can't even do a fireball. Yeah, I just fucked mm-hmm. this dude up, right? Like, let's go. Yeah, exactly. who's, who's next? Yeah. So how about you, Ethan? Like, how, how did how did Street Fighter and fighting games get uh, get into the picture for you? So mine actually kind of parlays into how we got into third strike um, mm-hmm. a little bit but so basically like you know i've been a gamer my whole life uh, i've been okay. playing video games and all sorts of games and mm-hmm. uh i played competitive magic the gathering for a long time i like went around the country played major tournaments like was grinding that circuit for a long time and, and a friend of mine who i did that with was a street fighter player like played every iteration of street fighter 4 played marvel 2 stuff like that and so every year we would watch Evo. So I didn't play any fighting games, but I've watched every Evo from like 2011, 2010, probably 2010 till now I've watched every Evo. And that was all I did. I just, every year I watched Evo, that was it. And um, I bought a stick when Mad Cats started making the Japanese arcade sticks like available. Um, I bought one, uh, a 360 stick, and then I got uh, Super Street Fighter 4 and I learned how to like, you know, I can do the DP motion and the fireball motion and stuff, but I couldn't really, I wasn't like a fighting game guy. Um, and then that was kind of it. You know, I, I stopped playing. I, I played a little bit of Street Fighter V. I got a PS4 stick, uh, kind of dipped my toe in, but didn't really play much. And then uh, competitive magic kind of, that's a, it's a whole other conversation, but didn't wasn't going so well. And so I kind of got out of it a little bit um, and was kind of looking for something to do and happened to go to a local uh place in the mall here that that has like i I don't really know how to describe them it's kind of like a variety like anime shop like they have like Mm -hmm. yeah uh, japanese candy and like anime figurines and pop vinyl and stuff like that so 
Um, I uh, they but they have a multi cade in the back, so I I you know was playing schmucks and stuff on this multi cade, and I was going to hang out with Adrian because Adrian and I actually have known each other for a long time. We were in a band together for yeah yeah. Me and Ethan go back. We go way back. So I was just going to hang out with him, just like regular shit. And I stopped there and I was filling some time and I was like, you know, I always thought Third Strike was cool because I knew a little bit about Third Strike. Like I had seen like Ganesian combos, like I had seen the Daigo Perry, You'd like in the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like I had like a like a little knowledge, right? But uh, I was just playing it and I was like, man, the aesthetic is so cool, the music is so cool, the the characters that I've never seen in any other Street Fighter game, they're all really cool. So I was just like feeling this game and then I went over to Adrian's and I was like, hey, you know, I just played Third Strike and it was like really fun. And he had a stick for playing shmups and I had my stick at my house. So I was like, I'll just go get my stick. Yep. And then he actually already had OE just because he has a hacked PS3. But whoa, man. there's a whoa. whole other thing. Whoa, whoa. But, whoa, 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 whoa! Were we trying to expose? I'm not Hold up! No, no, no! Hold up now! He just found it. It was in his house. Whoa, whoa! This podcast got way too real. No, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian got this new house, and it was there when he got there. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so I, it was I, there. I he didn't. He didn't buy yeah, it. Yeah, we it found there. this. No, just, he definitely didn't buy it. <laughs> okay, so it happened to be, okay. We found this hacked <laughs> PS3 that has OE on it. So uh-huh. we played. We just cracked out and played OE for like. The whole night for like Dude, six it was hours. Ever, yeah, it was like how, how long? Hours. How long ago was this? Like this was like roughly this time, twenty seventeen, like okay. August twenty seventeen. It was. It was. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. It was like late July. Was it, was it like July? July? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah July. Because yeah, because August was the first time we went to like a fight night and brought yep. our yep. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it would have been like July twenty seventeen was the first time we touched Third Strike. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. facts. That's facts. So it sounds like to me. You know, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, because you you guys had known each other for you know how how old were you how, how old were you guys when you first you know like how long have you guys known each other I guess is uh like a little over ten years probably ten years plus okay. a little over ten years yeah so so mm-hmm. it seems as though like when you guys met uh, uh uh Ethan you were still into magic right you were still competing uh, yeah, in magic actually, when we were playing music together I was uh-huh. uh like playing tournaments on the side or i would like not go to tournaments to play shows and, yeah uh, i always remember that being a thing like he'd be like man i got this magic thing but there's also this <laughs> big show we could play yeah yeah and we, i would always play the show i always played the show but yeah yeah, yeah. that was the thing yeah. so you guys were in a band ethan mm-hmm. you were playing magic and Fody, yeah. you were playing sf4 basically I, i'm of. just trying to figure out what the so kind of the... it's funny because the sf4 thing man like I knew Ethan at the time, I think, when I was doing that, but uh-huh. basically it was like I went to that tournament, I got mopped up, I kind of forgot about the game for a little bit. That's what I didn't include in my story, is that like, uh-huh. you know, you got salty, and me being a person and not being in that FGC mindset yet, I was like, no, oh, fuck this game, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I just like, yeah, right. Outside. And then uh, I think I actually got Blaze Blue a little bit after that. Oh, yeah, okay. we played Blaze Blue a couple times. Yeah, we did play Blaze Blue. <laughs> that's true. But... Yeah, yeah I no, Blaze Blue. We continue the story, but yeah, I, I just put down SF4 and I just continued to play RPGs like I did for you know okay. my whole life. <laughs> Before Third Strike, like we had some familiarity with fighting games, and like I watched yeah. fighting games, and like Adrian and I both have played them, but we didn't like know anything. Like I didn't know what a whiff punish was. I didn't know oh, any no. vernacular. I didn't, I didn't know, know anything, anything about, about cancels. Nothing. No, no, I just knew like how to do like a quarter circle motion on a stick. That was mm-hmm. basically it. Like. So I had like a, a little bit of an introduction and I knew like some of the lore, but I didn't know anything about like actually playing the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's where I was too. Mm-hmm. So Ethan, I wanted to kind of touch on the magic thing because yeah, sure. I don't think we've ever talked about magic in this podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, and, and the reason I want to talk about it is because, you know, there, I, I, I do know some Third Strike players who do also play who also do play like those competitive card games, and so yeah. I want to preface this by saying that I know nothing about this stuff. That's you know, fine. I know my you my nephew both, a- is actually a really good, supposedly a really good Yu Gi Oh player. Oh um, weird. And uh, but anyway, and he's actually now the esports coach of the high school that he's a, a chemistry teacher at. But anyway, he's uh But anyway, um, so card games like. Is there any parallels between card games and Third Strike? I mean, I just want to ask there, that now there, before I forget. There ser- seriously <laughs> is, yeah. You have to... So, in order to do well at, at an event like that, you both 
have to plan ahead like you do with third strike you know you have to think okay. about like you have to do research like you have to do with, with fighting games like you have to know the, the frame data right that parallel exists and also you have to play the game a lot and just get reps in to not so much a muscle memory thing but it's just uh oh okay so uh i believe that we have our having our the first Discord. bout of technical difficulties it oh, seems no. though uh it seems though uh ethan yeah. mash legs uh we've lost mash legs but hopefully he'll come back and so uh uh you know while we wait oh yeah there he is he's coming back there you go my just uh... sorry sorry okay basically sorry. just uh yeah magic is a lot like fighting games because mm-hmm. you have to you know be competitive and work hard and learn things about it to succeed yeah so that part is the same um mm-hmm. the only thing that's different is that i think really was a challenge for me at first is in magic you have so much time to think through your actions so like if somebody mm-hmm. does something that surprises you you can be like okay well how do i reel from this and how do i adjust and in fighting games you really have to do everything like your mm-hmm. decision making has to be so much faster mm-hmm. so that part was really like a big adjustment for me but otherwise a lot of things have helped me and and i've i've played magic tournaments where i've like i've lost a flight to japan i've lost five thousand dollars in a game of magic like i've i've played games of magic for like very very high stakes so for me like the tournament nerves thing that a lot of people have with fighting games i kind of don't have because i've already Mm -hmm. like knocked that out of my system Oh, i'm so jealous of that i'm so jealous like i wish i had that well, since you guys brought it up, you know, and I was going back and forth as to whether or not I should ask this question because I don't want to, yeah, you know, that's fine. Potentially drive a wedge between you guys. I never want to see the Scrub series explode. You yeah, know, it's a wrestling it's reference not. to It'll the Mega just... Powers. But when you guys first started playing Dirt Strike, real talk, <laughs> like who was giving who the work? I mean, come on, let Dude, me. Dude, actually, was... we've been like dead even the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, know, I like how Fody laughs at that. <laughs> I honestly know it's funny, right? Because like this is, this is exactly how I saw this play out. Like Ethan was gonna say that we're even, which we were, and then Mutant was gonna be like, "Hell no!" And like, but for real, like neither of us were like kicking each other's ass. It was no, like, it really has never up. been like one sided. It's been uh, uh, because even the other night, dude, we were going back and forth. Like it's has been like this head to head race the entire time. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we've been <laughs> we've all been pretty close in skill for the whole run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you guys discover Third Strike in the summer of 2017. Yeah, and yep. you know, you you guys just you, you guys told me the story of how you, Ethan, you went over to Fody's house and you guys just mm-hmm. played all night. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, being that you guys are relatively you know new players, um, I don't even want to say relatively. You guys are new. Yeah, yeah, right? we you're, definitely like, are. you're like brand new, brand new. Uh, you coming from a Magic background. I mean, obviously, you you played some fighting games when you were since you were young, uh, Fody. But you know, what are some of the things, some of the specific things that really drew you to Third Strike? Because like, there's dozens of fighting games out there, right? Yeah, hundreds yeah. of fighting games out there that you can choose from. For sure. Um, what was it about Third Strike that sort of attracted you guys to the game? So, like, for me, right off the bat, it, like the first thing I noticed was just how fluid it felt. Like, it felt like. Hmm. The second I, I took the stick in my hand and I like moved it any direction, I had complete control, right? And like, well, immersion is key, right? You know, to designing any kind of video game, yes. right? The level of immersion you can achieve, you know, a lot of times decides how, how good a game is. No, absolutely, and that that's like the like a big thing for me. Like, a game has to be cool, look cool, sound cool, and it also has to feel really good for me to like want to play it. Like the fact that it's so responsive. You know, like, and we were playing mm-hmm. the first night that we played, we played on CRT, right? So, like, I was experiencing as close as you could get, right, with like a PS3 console. True, we did start so, like, pretty well. We played on a PVM yeah. with OE the first time we ever played. So, was pretty- now, was that something that you guys just did, or was that something that you kind of read up on, like, hey, like, because, because I, I just, I'm just trying to get a gauge. I'm trying to gauge how familiar you were with not so much the game, but just kind of like the the lore of the game at when you guys kind of started picking it up dude for me like his setup, like i didn't i didn't know anything about third mm-hmm. strike i had maybe seen evo moment 37 like I yeah, aside thought, from that obviously aside right, from yeah. that like i had no idea right like the fact like ethan literally was just like we should play this mm-hmm. and i happened to have it and it looked so good like and it's like you hear it you hear the character select screen and you're like mm-hmm. this is insane like this is a fighting game i can play this all the time like this is so cool like 
It's yeah, just hearing like, rap music in a fighting game was weird for me. That was really no, that cool. was so sick. That like drew me. Okay. I never thought like yeah, I didn't know that existed. Yeah, mm-hmm. but no, I'll let I'll let Ethan talk on it a little bit too. Like oh like, yeah, I mean, I mean the the whole situation with the CRT thing just happened to work out because Adrian's like a a shmup guy, mm-hmm. so he just already had like you know he he's always been a a gamer and he's always had like a good collection, so he just already had like an optimal setup for us to play on, which was sick. But yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, big on that. yeah, I mean for me it's it's kind of like what I was saying before, like. I just think the aesthetic of Third Strike is so cool. And I think mm-hmm. I think part of it for me too is that like so if you look in if you're if you're watching like KOF 13, right? And you watch some like like that game also looks really good. Like the sprites look awesome. Like it just looks great. But you look at the combos people are doing and you're like, I'm never gonna fucking learn how to do this. <laughs> like an 800 hit combo. Like this guy's being touch of death. You're like, this is fucking crazy. I don't know how to, I'm never gonna play this. Like I'm never gonna be able to do this. I still think this today. That I see those combos, and I'm like, Yo, I'm never going to be able to do this. I can't get this man to play Melty Blood because of this shit. No, Keep dude, going. fuck that. But, but with Third Strike, I think you, the the actual... I mean, before I knew about like how hard some of like the Yurian and Yun stuff is in Makoto, um, when you see like people playing the game, it's usually like... You know, not super long combos. Everything seems super doable, except mm-hmm. for like the parry thing has so much mystique around it. I think, like, to somebody who doesn't play Third Strike, like you see people get parried, and you're like, "Oh man, this!" And you you see Moment Thirty Seven, right? And you're like, "This has to be so hard." And like everybody's gonna just parry everything I do. But like, once you actually like learn the game a little bit, it's it's way more approachable than it seems, and. The parries are so fucking sick, and it feels so good to parry things. That was I the think thing that even, kept me around, I think. Dude, even early on, right? Like, you parry something, and you're like, oh my god. Even when so you got cool. those accidentals, right? You're like, oh shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Even though it was accidental, I could do this on purpose and think about how sick that would be. Yeah, that was yeah, the thing exactly. that kept me around, right? Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, that, to me, that's like the ge- one of the geniuses of the parry. That it has, from a player standpoint you know, the level of complexity and difficulty, you know, that can be explored and explored, you know, as players get better in the game. But, you know, just from a sort of, I guess we could call a superficial or spectator viewpoint, the parry is so sick, right? It's so godlike. It looks so godlike, you know? Oh my God. I still... I would even say that, like, it it, it looked kind of wonky in Second Impact and, 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 and New Gen. But for some reason, they, they just sort of changed the way it, you know, it looked on the screen and, and just the whole aesthetic of the Third Strike parry. Yeah. And yeah so that's, like, to me, the genius of Third Strike, right? Thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. when the whole screen flashes in, in like, 2i, it, it looks I, weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not... And there's, like, this thing. pushback, right? Sometimes, like, if you parry in the air, I think, like, in... Yeah, there were, there were two separate air parries yeah. you know, in Second Impact. Um, I, I don't remember if it was in new gen as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't really play that all, a lot, but I do know in second impact, there were two different air parries, one okay. that would push you back and one that wouldn't yeah, one was like, down, one was forward or something like that. Yeah. I remember that you'd have to like press down in the air. Yeah. I remember or that. press forward for the other one. And I'm not, I didn't sure even know was. that. Um, That's very cool. but, um, but yeah, so I think now would be a good time to take uh, our first break. Uh, but when we come back guys, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the eventual formation of scrub series absolutely uh and then obviously leading up to you know the 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 first ever jazzy ranking event which happened at the uh paradigm grand prix uh back in uh 2018 uh two years to this date yeah anyway guys it worked out yeah man so anyway anyway guys before we uh go ahead and take uh our first break uh what i wanted to do is uh i wanted to send a huge shout out to arcade candy company uh they uh have so graciously uh supplied us with some pins uh to give all of the participants uh that were involved in the top eight jazzy circuit matches uh, of all time uh this is part of the jazzy retrospective that is going to air live later tonight on twitch.tv slash vankabot speaking of vankabot please go ahead and give him a follow Hardest working Dirt Strike streamer on yeah, Twitch. Up, Bot, For man. real, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I mistyped the, the command. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> and so all of the participants uh, in the top eight uh, Jazzy Circuit matches of all time are going to get a, a complimentary pin 
courtesy of Arcade Candy Company. Uh, they have some really uh, cool looking merch, 3S inspired merch. Definitely check them out. You can click on the link. Uh, we have them on Twitter. And these are some photos that I took. And uh, man, they look they look pretty they look pretty they look pretty boss, man. They look really great. Um, so there's a Urian one. Yeah, I need there's, that Urian one. Man. There's the Goki one, and then there's the, the the Rose, the Dudley one. So pretty sick pins, and so definitely check them out. Uh, Arcade uh, Candy Co. Dot Big Cartel. Dot Com. All right, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and take our first break. But when we come back, more Mutant Experience podcasts with Mash Legs and Fody of the Scrub Series. How's it going, guys? You are watching episode 46 of the Mutant Experience podcast with my special guests, the uh, founders of uh, Scrub Series, a third strike group out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. We got Mash Legs and Fody on the show tonight. Guys, uh, before we went on break, we had just started talking a little bit about your you know, introduction to third strike and how you guys just... just you know, I don't want to say random, right? Because that's just kind of... It was random. Call. You could say <laughs> random. Well, I mean, I, the reason I don't like saying random is because, you know, like, it's, it's not random. Right. There are reasons. There may be reasons, right? Like, there may be things that may have led up to you playing Third Strike, but we sure. just don't know them. You know what I mean? But anyway, yeah. but we'll use random, though. So basically, you guys randomly pick up Third Strike one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and now you guys are probably the most, you know, well known, one of the most worn or one of the more well known sort of third strike centric groups uh, in the Midwest. And so, how, how did that 
come about? Like, where did this, like, tell me the genesis of Scrub Series and, and how Third Strike came into play. Oh, man. Adrian, you want to handle that or you want me to handle it? Let's, let's do it in pieces, man, because yeah, yeah. I think yeah, man, there's, a lot. there's a lot, man. All right, I'll, definitely. I'll, I'll kind of start it, it off. I'll let you pick it sure. up. I'll let you pick it yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, basically, what happened was, like, you know, the story that you just heard, we picked it up, and then, you know, we, we were playing probably, I, I don't remember the exact time frame, but it, a few weeks probably had to have passed, and yeah. I, I remember Ethan just being like, man, how sick would it be if we just, you know, we, we had enough people just to run, like, a tournament of this shit. Like, just one, one tournament. tournament. I yeah. just wanted to do one tournament of this, you know, because we were going ham at that point. We were we were going playing it like every day for like the past few weeks, and we were like we're getting like super into it. Like this is the most I had ever played a fighting game, and like gave a shit about it. And like I was like really feeling it. So he said that to me, and I was like, "Yeah, man, it would be really sick to have like just one tournament." And like I I don't know who said it first, but somewhere along those lines, it was like I was always interested in streaming because like I always attempted streaming but like failed. <laughs> and like i was like man what if we streamed it too right but like i'll let ethan pick back up well yeah so we i mean we wanted to stream it we wanted to stream a tournament was basically what happened so we, yeah, we were, saw a stream up tournament <laughs> we were like we we got stream stuff like we got everything sorted out we got an elgato we got like all the the bare bones stuff you need right yeah like the um, real but it, was, stuff, yeah. it was like streaming off ps3 right like ps3 we bought we bought two ben Q's, Yep. Um, so we could have one, and we bought the head-to-head Ben Qs, right? So you can have one Ben Q for players, and then you can just take a line out of that, and then we could stream. It was like very simple setup. And we had a right, laptop. Because, uh, just to kind of sidebar too, like the yeah, reason that we the Ben Qs was like we wanted to stream, and at the time, the only real way for me to get a good signal from the PS3, because I'm kind of like a a perfectionist and like want things to look good, was like an HDMI port, right? So like. We didn't want to play, as stupid as this sounds, we didn't play CRT all the time when we played OE. Like, we did at Ethan's house, I feel like, for a while. Yeah, right? we did. We did. When we, we played, we, we, switched we played on stream. We, yeah, we were playing CRT mostly. Yeah. But then, I don't know, I guess what I was getting at is, like, we switched from the CRT. We actually brought a CRT to this fight night that we went to, like, the first night that we went. Yeah, yeah. So there's, we, so there's like, a fighting game group that exists in lacrosse right yeah yeah and gaming gen actually they kind of had like a really really good scene for a long time and i don't really know the the rationale behind like what changes happened with them and their personnel or whatever but i know that that event kind of went away and then um this this guy paul in our shout outs to paul suspected tuna in our local yeah, scene, paul, he, he took it upon himself to start uh, a local scene up and he had been playing street fighter 4 and like five had recently come out and he had a venue and he had everything sorted out. And actually it was like the second event that he ran that we went to. And we just asked him like, hey, can we bring our own setup for third strike? It doesn't have to be a tournament or anything. Like we'll just bring this setup if people want to play side games or whatever. And yep. we had like a ton of people playing side games and it was it was like really sick. And And at that point we had already started streaming. Like maybe there was like four or five of us that played games. Yeah, yeah. Um, in my basement at my parents' house. And that's where the um, Sunday started. I mean, that started yeah, in like the Sunday August Scrub Series. Yeah, so, so then we... So about, a, so about a month after you guys yeah, yeah. kind of picked up the game. So this is happening all pretty quickly. Yeah, very quickly. And then, yeah, um, like, if oh, you yeah, go but... back and watch our first streams, we've been playing for two weeks, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But and like, our, our whole rationale there. behind that was like, not only did we want to stream the tournament, it kind of grew within those two weeks of like, what if we just streamed our entire journey of like learning a fighting game, right? Exactly, yeah. So then it became like, okay, it's going to be a series of episodes. Okay, what do we call ourselves? You know, well, we're Scrubs. It's stupid, right? But it was like we were talking back and forth in chat, and we were just like Scrub series, and we're like, yeah, yeah it just it just stuck. Like it, it's it's yeah. so simple. But... <laughs> well, I don't think it's stupid. I think it's ingenious. I mean, especially <laughs> now that I know the origin behind it. It's sometimes yeah. the sometimes the simple things can still be godlike. Yeah, yeah, man. And the thing is, that's that is still so much our goal. And I don't want to get too much into like super long term goal things, but like mm-hmm. yeah. the whole point of our scene and the whole way that our genesis happened is based upon like new players playing this almost insurmountably difficult, long history game, but mm-hmm. doing it in a way where we can actually learn and get better. And the 
the chat has been like we went in thinking that everyone was going to be like super toxic and yes. and be like you guys suck because i mean people have been playing for 20 years and at that point it was like, right. why would they talk shit right yeah why would they <laughs> want to watch us play right but so many people were like oh man you guys are really getting it like what if you try this like maybe you should use this button and like it was, yeah, it was super literal, the exact opposite. It was like, yeah, everyone was really awesome. All this negativity was going to happen. And then you'd have someone hop into the chat and be like, hey, man, press this button instead here because this exactly, button's up yeah. here. So we're like, wait, hold up. This could be a resource, right? This is like mm -hmm. where you meet people. This yeah. And, and so it's been, it's been super easy to get other people who maybe don't even have a fighting game background, but just have a, a interest in hanging out. Like we have so many guys who came into Scrub Series who come all the time and do not have fighting game backgrounds. And we're just like, yep. This group of people seems at least agreeable, <laughs> and we're gonna <laughs> hang out and learn this game. And and I think I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I think it's been like an an awesome experience just to have this group of guys uh, get together once a week and and yeah. grind out these games and get better. And and then obviously we stream our tournaments as well, and we still do that. I mean, not not, not anymore because there's no <laughs> tournaments, but we were we were streaming tournaments in addition to our Sunday stuff. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So take me back to that. You, you had mentioned that you had uh, approached, uh, uh, I believe his name was Paul, right? Did, yeah. Do you Paul, remember Paul. what his name was? Or did he have like a uh, yeah, gamer suspected handle? Tuna. Oh, suspected tuna. Okay. So suspected so tuna. he was running these uh, these these meetups, these offline meetups. Yes. And yes. you had just approached him one day and said, hey, can we bring a third strike setup? And so I'll assume he said yes. He was cool with it. He was, yeah, right? very cool with it. And Paul, so, Paul's yeah. Awesome. So that first night, do you guys remember anything about that that first night when you guys brought your setup to this new or, or you brought this new third strike setup to this to this weekly like do you guys remember kind of like what those first few uh weeks were because i mean i, I always go i always go back to this i always go back to this but you know i'll never forget you know kind of the story you know that katie alpha you know obviously shout out to katie alpha you know uh, houston uh third strike player but you know he was he used to tell me stories about just kind of how he would just go to his like local smash meetup with a crt and an xbox 360 and just play by himself and this would happen like you know for weeks until other people started to kind of you know so what was your sort of like like how were you guys kind of approaching you know introducing third strike to this new offline community um, like how was that for man, you? We, we kind of just we literally just set it up mm -hmm. And I think me and Ethan just sat down and we just started playing. Yeah, exactly. Like we that, we yeah. weren't gonna like we weren't gonna go after people and be like, "Hey mm -hmm. man, come check this out, right?" Like, we'll <laughs> like open and be like, I got this which is a very right un third strike like thing to do, right? Like, yeah. like I don't Actually, know. So like, this is, I think, the funniest part about it, right? Uh -huh. So we show up with this fucking twenty inch CRT, right? Okay. And we're just carrying in this giant CRT and everybody there. Cause I mean, it's kind of a policy there that anyone can kind of bring a setup. Like people were uh -huh. playing like blaze blue on PC there. I mean, there's all mm -hmm. kinds of weird setups. Yeah. And which was, you know, another shout out to Paul and I'll give Paul some other shout outs when we get to paradigm grand prix, but um, he just made it a great open environment for anybody. And when we came there with the CRT and, you know, say what you will about this whole thing, but there was this kind of, I saw some size and people were like, yes. these guys have melee. And there was kind of this already, and it, it's not people necessarily that we associate with super regularly, but right, 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 there was right. this kind of air in the room of like, here we go, we got we got Smash guys now, and they didn't have any at the time. And then when we had Third Strike, everyone was like, oh shit, never mind, that's Street Fighter, like I could play yeah, that. That's go. so funny, they just automatically assumed you were melee players. Well, and that's fair, because I mean, that's that's a big thing with a lot of melee guys would be carrying uh -huh. on CRTs. And, yeah. Um, we know that struggle because we did that with Third Strike, but well, was there was there a collective sigh of relief once the there really on Third Strike was? was? <laughs> yeah, there literally was. And and weirdly enough, so it was a Street Fighter V tournament, and we had a few people playing, uh, like Loki Goki, whose name you you shouted out uh, in the real or fake or fight the cade with, fake with real uh, fake Dan. Game, yeah. yeah, he actually was one of the original, the OG Scrub Scrub Series guys, but. Um, we actually cultivated a lot of people from this first event. And one of the people who came immediately and came every single week was Wade. Dude, and Wade. I played Wade in Street Fighter V, and he beat me, like, barely beat me. Like, we had a really, really close match. Now, had you guys known Wade before? Or no. was the first time you met I just Wade? played okay. him in the tournament. That was okay. it, right? Yeah, and, yeah, so we played, and then, I, and then he played a little third strike with us, and he was playing Necro right away. He was a Necro main. Yeah, he played and 
I was like, hey, yeah, man, we do stuff you know. every Sunday <laughs> if you want to come over. And this was on a Monday. So it was like, you know, that week we're going to have this event if you want to mm-hmm. come. And I told like everybody, like, you guys can come to my, my parents' house. And he rode his bike out there yeah. and just showed up. And uh, we hit it off and we've, you know, been, uh, been friends ever since. And, and then I got a people started kind of trickling in, but... I have a, a, this is a legit fun fact about Wade. I've actually missed more Scrub series than Wade has. That's true, yeah. <laughs> that is true. I haven't missed many, but Wade has missed, like, he's always, he's always there. He's always, he's such, yeah, shout out yeah. Wade. Man. Shout out Mass Liesdell, Wade local, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Come on. Anyways, anyways. But yeah, basically, I mean, that event was really our first time doing stuff. And then we showed up there, you know, every month. But then after maybe, Two three months, Paul let us run third strike there, so okay. we started running like a, a sanctioned thing there. Yeah. Yeah. So then we ran our one tournament, and we had probably ten people, and we were like, "That was sick." But then, and was this every coming. week? Was this was this every week or every, every month? month? Every month. Every month. Every, every month. month. Yeah. So we we ran our one third strike tournament we wanted to run, but then they kept coming, and then every Sunday we had more than eight people. I mean, there were weeks even very yeah. early on where we had you know twelve thirteen people in that basement. That's facts. Mm-hmm. That's facts. Yeah. So how did that? How did that get all started? Because um, you know, obviously, you know, we're living in a COVID world right now, right? Pandemic. Yeah. That's, so it's not happening now. Yeah. And so yeah. and so, you know, your your meetup is just so like it. It really makes me sad. You know, when I think about your Sunday stream Dude, and me just too. how 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 there's so many things we can't do anymore. But uh, anyway, how, how how did that kind of come about? The 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 base because it started in your basement, right, Ethan? That's what My parents' saying. basement. Yeah, I parents was in basement, a okay. small apartment at the time, and I didn't have okay. space for it. And they uh, that's actually where where our band practiced too back in okay, the day. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's kind but, of funny to think about like where our band was for the longest time. Yeah, yeah. We just took advantage of my training for, for yeah. forever. Yeah, but yeah, we just uh, we just did stuff. Um, you know, every Sunday there, and it was you know like uh. It was basically me, Adrian, my brother Mason, and my friend Martin, and my friend Alex. And I knew them from Magic, right? And they were just, like, casually interested in fighting games. And that was the first group, right? And then people mostly came in from the tournaments that we would go Mm -hmm. to. We would meet people. So then, basically, like, our group grew exponentially. But pretty much everyone that we got to come to Scrub Series after that came from like the existing fighting game community fight night, yeah so like it was it was like a mixture of like people that we'd meet at the you know at the local meetups and then you know people would like sometimes just like go on the lacrosse fighting game community facebook and message us and be like hey does anyone play x game here and like sometimes we'll be like street fighter and we'll be like oh yeah we play third strike i mean you can come check it out and then we've literally had people i think like i shout out mark actually uh zeth the dark mage in, in chat we met him on facebook we had never we didn't even know the dude like just, yeah, he lived like 30 minutes away. Yeah, mm-hmm. at the time. And we were like, yeah, man, just come down. And, you know, now he's a great friend. Like, I couldn't imagine not knowing Mark. <laughs> we just, he, he randomly just messaged us one day. Mm-hmm. So, like, you, so, you had a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. So, like, who's, like, like, whose idea, like, was it, though? Like, like, like was it, like, like, was it one day, you know, one of you guys said to, to the other, hey, you know, maybe we should start meeting up in, you know, my basement or, or in your basement. Like, what, what, Dude, I don't even that, know. I don't need to something honestly. happen. Honestly, okay, so th- I think this is I might be going out on a limb and I, I don't I'm not trying to make anything up, but like we started <laughs> No, for real. Like it's hard to remember. So like I'm, I'm trying to remember this, but there was like a Facebook group that like Ethan uh-huh. made at one point. Like you know, it was like the third strike lacrosse Facebook group. It was before lacrosse fighting game community and like Ethan had posted still like, exists, a tier somewhere. list. He had posted a tier list for the game and then he posted like I think frame data. Mm-hmm. I posted was, like yeah, I posted a link to just stuff. About yeah, him. and I think, like, what happened was either me or Ethan were like, we should practice this and, like, stream it consistently, right? Like, if okay. I'm going to be, a, like, if we're going to stream it, if we're going to have this gear, we, we might as well use it. You know what I mean? Like, we already bought the gear for, like, doing the tournament stuff, so it's like, let's just stream. And then it just mm-hmm. became a Sunday night thing. I don't even think it was, like, really, like... <laughs> like yeah, a, really, we've been on the same thing. page about so many things. Like, mm-hmm. we've really yeah, just kind of... Happened. Happened worked in tandem the whole way so it just kind of naturally evolved yeah yeah no 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 so th- th- that's what happens with a lot of stuff too right 
Yeah, you know, for sure. I, I, you know, I wasn't thinking. You know, I didn't assume that you had some sort of Machiavellian plan to take over. The world or, <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I was just kind of curious as to kind of how that came about. And so, you know, your 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 you you guys start the you know the stream in in, in your parents' basement, Ethan. And yes. so, when did the whole? Because you know, one of the things that your your stream on Sunday is, you know, sort of starting to get well known for is, you know, at first, you know, you. To, to kind of show as new players, right, the kind of level of commitment to the game, to spend money to get super guns and CPS3 boards, which obviously are not inexpensive, right? right. They're not cheap. No, they're not cheap. You know, like, where did that all start coming about? Like, was that just kind of, was that mostly your influence, Fody? Because, you know, we had just talked about how you were always into, you were already into shumps and video games and stuff. But, like, where did that... Um, I would say largely that Adrian, yeah. Yeah, you, it you was, I, I don't know, man. I don't like to... I get really picky. So, like, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to take this back just so, so people can kind of understand why okay. I like this. But, like, I remember the first time I tried to emulate, like, Super Mario World on my PC. And it was mm-hmm. on, like, an LCD screen. And I pressed jump, and I was trying to do, like, all my normal platforming. And I was like, hey, this sucks, and I can't platform like I usually can. Like, I really just need to, like, play this on what it's supposed to be played on, right? So, like, from mm-hmm. the get-go, my brain is like, you got to play a Super Nintendo on a CRT. Or you got to play Third Strike on a CRT because that's where it's played, right? Yeah, so, like, yeah, my sure. whole thing, and, like, I already had PVMs and, like, hella CRTs chilling at my house because I'm just, I don't know, I hoard those things. And basically, we're like, we need to get a Super Gun and we need to get a board, like, fast. Because, like, that's the only way, like, that's how people play. Like... Outside of having a cab, like, we got to be playing on what people are going to be playing on at these tournaments, like, if we ever traveled. Like, this is, this is down the line now. Like, at this point, we had already been going for a year when we were talking about hardware, I think. Or, wouldn't you say, Mash? Mash like, or, yeah. Um, I mean, for sure, a while. I mean, we, were, we hadn't, like... Because basically, we were trying to... We, we actually... Shout-outs to, uh, to Windy Gaming. Um, he hit us up like directly and just was in this in the chat just talking about games like yeah yeah and and we had gone to i think we had gone to frosty before we even talked about getting a a you know like a board and a super gun yeah that's facts um but basically yeah we we had been playing for a while and then we just kind of that was the natural evolution is we want to we want to play on a board and yeah, we, we want to play third strike and it was awesome so we we wanted to do that and so he he uh was a you know a friend of the channel so we we actually got a a rather large donation from a friend of mine and, and just had been raising money with you know random cheers people would drop and like yep. we had a couple of subs so we had a little bit of money going and we used i mean basically everything is our own money for the most part, uh, with a little bit of help from the stream. Yeah, but, the stream always is coming through too, for sure. Yeah, the stream definitely helped out with the super gun. But yep. yeah, so we we got the super gun, and there's a there's a video of us unboxing it and using it for the first time on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. So I I could yep. find it. And, and congratulations out. for not blowing yourselves up. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. For real. Yeah, um, just a, just a sidebar here. Not, I'm not trying to do this, but like I saw Katie Alpha's question in the chat. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just super anxious and I get nervous. And yeah, I we we just call use real names. flags because I'm just goofy. Anyways, yeah, I've, yeah, basically we use real names, but yeah, we but yeah <laughs> more or less we we just knew what was like like Adrian said. I mean, he's always been this way about hardware, and I'm mm-hmm. more this way about like gameplay and like and not that he isn't, but you know, we're we're very much like we have to do it the right way, right? So like, yeah. we like. You know, even now, like when I when I watch a video or when I like learn something about a character in the game, I'm like fact checking things, like making sure like um, we've just very much been about that. Because I think part of it, too, is like we're we're learning this game that's so challenging and we're at such a deficit being so new and like yeah. not having the muscle memory that it's like you have to cut out all the factors that make it harder than it is so like if you can play on a good setup that's one thing because then you're you're already adjusted when you go to the tournament if you can play on stick with sanwa buttons you're adjusted right so it's like anything that we can do that that does that and thankfully we're yeah and thankfully we're able to afford that out of pocket which i mean is is a lot to to save up for but 
uh, it was worth it for us. So we got all the stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, fast forward a little bit to Paradigm Grand Prix. So uh, at this point, I uh, I had already known of you guys. I think I had been watching your channel for 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 a few months uh, yeah, yeah, by then. Yeah, in. yeah. I actually remember the first night you came in. I was like. <clears throat> Oh, well, out. I, I'm flattered. Okay. We were actually freaking out. We talked <laughs> no, like, afterwards for like an hour. That was hour. like one of the first times where I was like, yo, Mutant, I know that he's like, you know, he's in the scene, man. Like, he's like one of the dudes. And I was like, we need to be like cool with this guy because he might be able to like give us some good tips or whatever. So like, I was kind of like mentally freaking out. But it, mm. yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, eventually one day, I think all of us, it would be a really cool idea for all of us on the Jazzy Circuit Board to do some sort of maybe round table podcast to kind of talk about sort of the genesis of jazzy. Uh, yeah, but, cool. but, but today is not that day. Um, Cause you know, we really don't have uh, a whole lot of time, uh, right, but I would yeah. like to touch on kind of, you know, at the point where I, I approached you guys uh, about, you know, you know, being, you know, being interested in running the very first uh, jazzy circuit ranking event, which is of course the occasion that we're celebrating today, yes. two years to this day, uh at uh the paradigm grand prix event uh run by your guy by you guys uh we had the uh first ever jazzy circuit sanctioned event uh and shout outs to uh carrie aka soul avenger the very first yes. winner yes. of the jazz no one could take that away from you nah, he's right, always right? right? Have that. and what Being a great the guy first. Too. Yeah, happen. what a great guy to have to have to have it happen to. And, That's wild. Um, shout out Carrie, man. I love yeah, Carrie. Yeah, shout out to Carrie. Shout out to the Chicago scene. And so, um, and also Big Bad Wolf. Definitely. You know, really, shot. really showing at the very beginning that he was all about this tournament life, right? Like he oh, was yeah, gonna go. Sure. He was gonna grind. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to Big Bad Wolf. So, um, you know, I had approached you guys about doing the very first Jazzy ranking event, and so, you know, what were you? You know, I don't even remember who I DM. I might have DM'd you, Ethan. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, I don't really remember either. But we, um, one of us. We, yeah, we I reached out to you guys. You said you were interested. So, so what was your thought process when I asked you guys if you would be interested in running the very first Jazzy Circuit ranking event in history? Man, honestly, Ethan, you take this one. I, I, you take this <laughs> All right. One. So, first off, I I still am immensely honored that you would think of us to do that. Uh, because I mean. We had known about the jazzy circuit, you know, the the germinations of that sort of starting. And, you know, we were really passionate about it, wanted to be involved and, and very much just happy that you guys and the I mean, everyone watching that everyone's been so respectful and, and open to having us as part of your scene. We don't really you know, we're not great players. We don't have a lot to contribute, but we try to do what we can to make it, you know, you know, to contribute something. Right. And yeah. we thought, you know, this would be a great thing as you know, when Adrian and I were talking about it. This would be a great thing for us to do to try and contribute. We'll, we're really going to blow it out. We're going to do the best we can do, the best production we can do for a third strike yeah. event. And um, I, I really want to shout out again, Paul. Um, it was really his event. I mean, he yeah, it was he, his event. He basically is, was in the process of starting an arcade, which has kind of been on the back burner now, of, of, of course. Mm-hmm. But um, his arcade is called Paradigm Arcade, mm-hmm. and this was going to be a big fundraiser event for him and like get his name out there and. And so he organized everything himself and we helped with a few things, but mainly it was the stream and yeah, we were third the strike was and really what it, what it was. Yep. And mm-hmm. he, he did all the, all the major legwork. So then that left us time to really work on our, our stream stuff. And a lot of that credit really goes to Adrian, but I mean, we just, we knew right away that we were like, okay, if this is going to be the first jazzy event, it's got to look good. Mutant's going to, yeah, exactly. Mutant's going to put trust in us. We're going to do everything we can to make this the best production event that we can make. Yeah. And I think that was like when in like the tables like really kind of shifted. Like I was like, okay, we got to like for real go in on this, right? And like I think at that point too, we didn't even have arcade hardware lined up. And I no, think we, we like, we hooked it up. Yeah. We hooked it up after that. Like shout out Paradise Arcade uh, for that. Yeah. But, they, like, they gave us a board. Um, and, but but yeah. we like bought a stream PC. We bought a yeah, bunch yeah. of a bunch of like forty foot cables. We bought like we spent like fifteen hundred bucks buying stuff for that yeah, event. Like hella, hella money. We we, get, we really upgraded all of our stuff so that we could handle something like that. Yep. Um, and bought like an internal <laughs> capture card. We were using a, a Elgato on a laptop for a long yeah, time. Yeah, we switched to Avermedia and stuff. Yeah, because correct me if I'm wrong. You guys weren't just streaming Third Strike. 
at the no, we we were streaming. We uh, streamed. I, I think you streamed SF four, right? You SF five, right? You streamed SF five. We streamed Street Fighter five, yeah. We did five. yeah. And then uh, ST as well. We 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 did ST. Mm -hmm. That's right. We did ST as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you know, obviously, you guys were, were had already been streaming from your basement, Ethan, and then yeah, eventually yep. you guys moved to, to to Adrian's place, I think, right? Uh, or 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 where did yeah, you guys we, move to? We moved around. Now we're actually yeah. at my house. I brought oh, my okay. house. Yeah. Okay, he's in the house. Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, and so all good. So you guys had been streaming already, uh, but this is like your first like really big event. Yeah, dude. And so for sure, yeah. You know kind of take me through like just kind of how you were preparing for 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 the for the for the job for 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 doing for putting all this together man honestly like it was just kind of a lot of nights in my kitchen <laughs> like definitely dude yeah and just going in we're sitting at the uh, pc you know making uh -huh. layouts i mean i'm talking like every pixel had to be perfect i'm sure he can uh, he can attest to this for real was, yeah like, we spent so much time like, on things that you guys would think are so minimal just Thanks. dumb stuff too. But we I was spent, like, oh, this matters." We spent two nights selecting music for the whole screen, but we got yeah. some great music. We, I mean, yeah, we, we have, like, yeah, we we did everything. If you guys go back and watch that tournament, I'm still very proud of how it looked. Like, we yeah. we went through a lot of work to make sure that all that stuff worked out. And then we also thought, you know, like the nice thing about it is Adrian put so much time into designing everything for for like the layout and everything to to make this work. But then we thought, you know, if we run future events so much of this can carry over, right? And at oh, that yeah. point, we were kind of like, you know, we want to be like a, a baby spooky for Third Strike. Like, we want to be able to go yeah. go places and, like, put on events and, like, we have the capability to do this. So we want to show people that, you know, we can... That's why we went so ham the first time. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Because, like, mm -hmm. we, you, had to, you had to come out swinging. You had to be like, this is what our events can look like, right? And, exactly. Like, we wanted, and for, like, it's Third Strike. We wanted Third Strike to look so good. So, like... We just went in, man. I don't know. I think that kind of comes from the from like playing music too, because so much of like being in a band is if your band has a show and you yeah. guys just totally suck, then everyone's gonna remember that oh, band sucks. That band and sucks. And then they're that never band gonna band see band you band. again yeah. after that, right? Even if you get like godlike later on, right? They're gonna be like that band yeah. sucked that though. Band I saw sucked them. Back in like 20, 20, uh, yeah, twenty eighteen. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. that's gonna happen. That's fine. And and our some parts of our event probably weren't the best and our gameplay yeah. wasn't i mean granted we're not great now but looking back at it like Holy it's shit. massively different but so yeah so you you have to just like your your first impression has to be really strong it was so yeah lot. a lot of it was just like you know spent preparing it to make it look good but outside of that you know once we got to event day you really start to realize like especially because you're, you're putting it on a big screen on this stage you, you really start to realize things that you may have not have thought of before and like the projectors get there and the projectors have a dvi port but not an hdmi port yeah we had a bunch you of gotta figure that out and you're like oh my god you like you start to panic i'll i'll tell you i'll say this if you ever plan on running a big event it's not 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 to you mutant but to anyone out in the stream world it's not going to go the way that you think oh you no i know that too i know that too <laughs> yeah I know you, that you too. have to have yeah. like if something can go wrong you have to plan like it will go wrong exactly yeah, yeah. I, and I learned that that day because there were so many things we had to rush out, go get a, an adapter to make the projector work. Mm -hmm. We were freaking out about the super gun at one point because we were like, oh my god. It kept like blinking every few frames. There was like a black screen that would pop up and I, someone was like, Yo, by the way, you're off. We yes, like, okay. you have to know that. You, <laughs> you got to have a dirty sink. The sink cleaner. Yeah, don't. Mm -hmm. You need I, a dirty I, I mean, sink. For Aver Media at least. But anyways, yeah, you just, it's all these little things that you don't think about that just start to happen. And you really start to learn, which is, I, I really, man, Paradigm was great for that because it really set me up to like, well, set us up to, you know, put on a better stream each time we stream. I mean, look at us now at the Rivoli, right? Mm -hmm. Like now we can do what we did at Paradigm basically every month, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. And we're on a projector there too. I mean, it's, it's actually, I, I really love that venue. I, I really hope that we're able to do that again mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, um, shout out our new our venue, man. If you're ever in the Midwest and once COVID's over, Come to a movie theater and play Third Strike with us. Definitely, yeah, it's, it's a blast, man. It's, you know, and as much as you guys say, you know, that it was an honor that I asked you guys to run the first Jazzy Ranking event, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, I mean, to me, it, it's the, it was the exact opposite. You know, I was just so, I felt so, you know, lucky that you would, that you would accept, you know, kind of doing this and, and that you would be so open to doing this because you guys are so new. But that's kind of why I asked you guys, 
because like after you know i caught your stream and then i learned more about your scene i realized just how quickly you guys were just on it you know like three years ago you weren't even third strike wasn't even on your minds right I like know, th three crazy. years ago three four years almost four years ago you guys were just you know you just one day randomly ethan you went over to adrian's place to play third strike and then now you know you're you're you, that level of commitment and so you know as much as you guys say you're honored i mean i just you know i was just absolutely floored because i thought you guys were would be the perfect you know would be the perfect ones to run the first jazzy ranking event because you know because the, the, i, yeah, you know, I, I definitely that, was trying to kind of make a point about jazzy you know what i mean um yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not going to get into that now, but you know, you guys can 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 you know, can 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 speculate what that point was. But um, <laughs> sure, yeah, you know, just I just I thought you know this you guys would be just sort of the perfect candidates to 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 to, to kick Jazzy off. Um, and so you have Grand Prix going on, and so during the event, obviously you guys are focused on putting on the event and streaming and everything. Um, but you guys are players too. You guys are competing in the tournament. Yeah. How did that? <laughs> yeah. Not only are you new to playing tournaments, or not, not only are you new to streaming tournaments, you guys are also pretty new to playing in tournaments. Man, yeah. I'm like brand new. I mean, Ethan had the magic stuff, right? So he kind of had the turning nerves. Under <laughs> it is still but different like, though, man. But bro, like, like I'm sitting there, like we're controlling the stream, and then I have to go play, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, and then the nerves start to like. Start to yeah, and you don't get to you don't you don't get to play warm up. You don't with get to play casuals. Yeah, you're on the stream. we so, still do that every every month when yeah. we run events. We we're just like in the back. We're in this tiny back room of this movie theater, cramped in, and you can't leave. Like Literally there's no out. aisle to walk in and out. Everyone so, has to get up for you to leave. Yeah, so so we get in the back and we're just crunched in the back, and then it'll be like, hey, you got to play your match. So we're like. It still is kind of this this thing, like being the TO, and I mean, we, we really aren't POs, but you know, being involved in, in running a tournament and also playing in the tournament is, is like just frankly, it just sucks to do like tur tournament wise, but it's it's still super fun because it's it's like because like when you think about it, if you go to a major, right, like you're chilling and playing casuals and stuff, but there's so much time that's just downtime, and you're like, man. I wish I was doing something cool and like at least that's how I feel sometimes at, at majors. <laughs> does, does that mean Ethan at every wow. major you go to from now on, if they want to put you to work, they can like like next frosty, I mean, you know, if, exactly. they're, if they're a little shorthanded, they can come to you. I, and <laughs> I like having the break, right? But I think if I never got to do, I mean, I think part of what's awesome about like helping with the stream and, and doing all that is uh -huh. that you have this this sort of like other tournament. Right. Like mm -hmm. I have to make sure that this stream goes well and I have to make mm -hmm. sure that like these names get changed over and the score gets reset. And you kind of have this other thing that you're like, I'm also going to kill it at this. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like when you like when I play in a tournament and I do reasonably well. I... No. And, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan's Ethan is lost again. Man. Don't worry, guys. We'll uh, we'll have him back shortly. I think there oh. you go. There he is. Yo, my man, he's, he's a, an Dude, game. I don't know what's happening. Oh, so do not play, do not so play this man on fight game. I'm not scared. Oh my god, my internet's <laughs> solid. The internet's solid. It's just Discord's crashing. Yeah, basically, oh, no. basically, yeah. Running running events is awesome, but it's hard to run events and play events. That's yeah. yeah. I mean, but like what I think Ethan was about to say, but then his internet or whatever cut him off is like. Yeah, like, you, you may not play your best in the tournament, right? And that mm -hmm. sucks. And, like, it does suck because me personally, it's like, I want to get good, too. And, like, I want to do all these other things. But, like, I have this stream that I'm actually, like, super passionate about, too. So the fact that you put on, like, you know, what I think is a really good stream is a win, too. So, like, even though you may have, like, played, like, shit in the tournament or I lost, like, you also just, like, showcased your local scene. And you gave people a platform, and you gave them a, a way to go back and watch their matches if they fucked up, so they mm -hmm. can learn, right? Like you're creating this resource, so there's like this whole like other mindset. Like yes, it's yeah, hard to sure. stream, but then like you have this whole other thing that's like incredible. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that have happened recently, probably just organically. Uh, because of you know the pandemic that we're dealing with, is that there's been a lot of people popping up running uh, online third strike tournament series yes uh, yeah. lots of people you know tommy two-step just started his uh battle 
theater, whatever, what, what was it called? Battle theater thing. Battle um, royale. Theater. Battle opera theater. Um, and and then the basement dweller gaming guys. You know they run their tournaments. CAC two over there in the U in the EU, or in the UK. Excuse me now. Uh, yep, after yep. Brexit. <laughs> yeah. <you guys laughs> after Brexit. Now. Um. So many, you know, people. I, I'm hearing rumblings that there's going to be a weekly team third strike tournament. I'm st- I, I heard some rumblings that that might happen. I've not heard rumblings about that, but I will. Yeah. I will play. I'd be happy to play a team third strike tournament. I'll play teams. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously, running an online tournament, there's some differences between running online versus offline tournaments. Um, yeah. But you know, is it, do you think there are similarities? And if so, what advice would you give to some of these streamers that are just starting out and running third strike tournaments? Well, I'll let Adrian handle a lot of this, but the the one thing I want to say is that. I mean, beyond any technical thing, is mm-hmm. that I think I've, we've been really, really fortunate to have a great scene and a great group of guys and, and just coming out all the time. And and you guys in the chat, I mean, we've we've really been fortunate and and we've gotten a lot of great feedback and people have been really receptive to what we've been doing. But I think you have to go in treating it as kind of like a thankless job. Like you're doing this as a service and you're doing it because you love the game and that's what, how you can contribute, right? Like. I'm not a top player. I, I may never be a top player, but what I can do is I can give people a platform to play and I can give people a way to, uh, especially in the pandemic, if you're streaming online stuff, you can give somebody an escape from reality for a few hours one night. And, and you know, people may not say thank you. People may not, you know, go out of their way to, to say anything to you about it, but they, you know, you just have to know that what you are doing is is meaningful for a lot of people, even though it seems kind of silly. That it's just like an online tournament, but absolutely. Um, <laughs> outside of that, man, I don't know. I mean, I guess for online, I, I have no like experience with online tournaments, so I can't speak to it at all. But like, I guess from a guy who streams offline tournament perspective, uh, I think that it's important to maybe have what matches you're going to put on stream, at least for the first round, kind of like set right. Like you got to just if I'm going into specifics, like just know what you're going to run and make sure those people are like ready to go, right? So you don't have any downtime on your stream. You got a match queued up, ready to go right away. That's true. Yeah, we we've, we've been fortunate enough to kind of develop our own system for offline events, but you do need something like that. Cuz yeah. online events can go long. I mean, and there's a lot of uh other additional factors too that you don't have with offline events you have to consider oh, like totally. even if your internet's solid, what if, you know, some random player's internet screws up, are you going to DQ him? Like what's what's mm-hmm. going to happen? You have to have yeah. all these plans of like like you said earlier, mutant, you have to know that things will go wrong, and you have to have a plan for when they do go wrong. Yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, speaking of uh, online and offline tournaments, uh, I think now would be a good time to take our second break. Uh, but before we do that, um, back by popular demand. I'm minimizing the chat. I've minimized okay. the chat. We're going to go ahead and bring back a segment that has become very popular recently on the Moon Experience podcast, uh, and that is uh, a segment called Fake, Real, or Fight Cade. Yo, let's go. I'm so excited. So this is the third time we've played this, and so it's it's gotten a lot harder to kind of find screen names, you know? (laughs) But um, I think we we, we came up with some uh, good ones uh, this week. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, play uh, Fake Real or Fight Cade, uh, but with a twist. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. I don't know about the twist. I'm excited. I don't know anything okay. about the twist. All right. So, uh, Mashlegs, Fody, since there are two of you here on the stream, you know, I was thinking, you know, it's Third Strike, it's competition. You know, I think competition is, is not necessarily a bad thing. It's a okay. good thing. Oh, man, I like this. I like this. And so Adrian's thought... going to do so much better than I can. <laughs> and so I thought instead of, you know, you versus the machine, it should be you. It should be Fody versus Mashlegs. And so <laughs> we're going to go ahead and play a very special edition. I get body head-to-head, head-to-head edition. <laughs> Yo, look at this. <laughs> of fake, real, and fight. Camp. Man, you watch so many more streams than I do. I'm going to get bodied so hard. Okay. Go. I got this. All right. Okay, so so oh, so um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just looking through the days already, and I've already started laughing. Uh, <laughs> oh man! Oh, so, I, might actually do that. I don't know. Let's go. I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, 
what we're going to do is, uh, you know, since there are two of you here, I thought what we could do is instead of the normal five names, we do seven names. Oh, damn. Oh, sure. And, so then, okay. and, and, yeah. and obviously, whoever gets the, the higher score wins. And if in the, uh, in the event of a tie, if you guys so happen to go 7-7, seven, seven, then we'll do, a, we'll do one for, for, for tiebreaker. Okay. All right, all right. All right, so you guys ready? So for those of you who are unfamiliar with this game, this is a fake real or fight cage. This is a game that I came up with many years ago that I've resurrected thanks to the uh, current uh, pandemic that we're dealing with. Uh, and so basically I'm going to display a screen name or a username or a handle, gamer handle on the screen. And Mashlegs and Fody are going to have to guess whether that screen name is a fake screen name the screen name of an actual real player, offline player, <laughs> or if it's a Fightcade name. And so for anyone who's familiar with Fightcade, uh, Fightcade has uh, a plethora of very colorful and interesting usernames. Some interesting uh, fodder for sure. Yes, great fodder for critical theory. Should <laughs> be good. And so are you, are you ready to play fake real or Fightcade head-to-head -head edition, guys? I'm ready as I'm going to be, yeah. yeah. Ready? Yeah. Okay, 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 great. Okay. So, uh, first up. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Uh, first up. <laughs> Blesser of bowls? Blesser of bowls. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> I like clearly, it. A clear, lot. Clear, clear, clearly a pun. <laughs> on uh clearly a pun on on a third on some third strike lore <laughs> so how you know, do you I, 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 I so and so basically um i guess what we'll do is i'll ask i'll ask i'll ask ethan first and then i'll ask you Fody. i guess is, 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 is i guess the only way we can do it this way so okay. ethan what do you what do you think is it fake is it real or, or is it fight cage <laughs> bless so, <my> bowels <laughs> i i think it's not fight cage so okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I think that it might be real. I think that okay. it's, it's potentially real. I'm going to go with real. Okay. So Ethan is going with real. And so, Fody, what are you going with? I'm going fake. I'm going, going fake. fake. Full yeah. on fake? Full on fake. All right. So, um, guys, uh, this is, in fact, a fake username. Oh. There is no player other than, you know, known as Blesser of Bulls. And so that means Fody one zero. All right, we knew this would happen. We, knew this would happen. So, so, it, but the the game is still young. It's true. Yeah, we're early in. Okay, the we're game sure. is still young. It's still early in, and so you know we can definitely uh, rally back here if we need to. <laughs> All right. All right. Ready. Next one. All right. <laughs> Batty Ryder Vin Diesel. <laughs> Yo, okay. <laughs> Batty Ryder Vin Diesel. Oh. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. I think you are too. <laughs> okay. This is a fight cade name. Fight cade name? You think it's a fight cade name? This is a fight okay. cade. I'm also going think, fight cade. I'm going fight cade. You're also going fight cade? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, Katie says real. There's some people. Oh shit. Uh, well, then it, I'm sure it is. I'm I'm sure we're talking. Oh, so 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 Zeth says no spaces. Got to be fight Kade. Yeah, that was my so. thought. Honestly, that was yeah. why I said fight Kade. <laughs> yeah. Well, but the thing is, you can have spaces in fight Kade name. Yeah, yeah. You, you can. can. Yeah. Yeah. You can. If you're a cop, I guess you can have. Spaces. <laughs> Damn. So guys, you are both correct. It is indeed a uh, fight Kade I, name. I knew it. Batty Ryder Vin Diesel, please challenge this man. I will, I will. <laughs> or this woman, or, you know, whoever is yeah. behind the computer screen. I'm <laughs> guessing Elena um, player. Elena player, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Nah, Goki. Okay. I think Goki. <laughs> okay. For Vin real. Diesel would play Goki. I'm saying. All right. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so. Good. So 2-1. Not bad. Not bad. I'm on the board, right. yeah. On the board. <laughs> Right, I'm glad I got one. eight point. I'm I'm happy for you. All right, next next name. <laughs> Ooh, this is sick. Low low good forward low forward Superman. Good, good <laughs> ass name. 
<laughs> Low I have my answer. Superman. <laughs> oh, I have my answer too. <laughs> yeah, I have my answer. Go, you go first. <laughs> I think that it's. I I like it a lot. I want to just say I hope it that it's real, good. but I think that it's fake. I think it's fake. I'm is all that f- your final answer? Final answer is fake. Yeah, I'm going fake too, man. You're going fake too? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, good okay. at name though. All right. Well, guys, unfortunately, it is actually a real <laughs> username. That's sick. There is a player that entered an offline third strike uh, tournament by the name of Low Forward Superman. Yo, shout, shout out, out to you, guy. Low Forward. Shout Superman. out that guy. So it's it's still two one. It's still I'm your biggest fan. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's it's still anyone's game. You know, it, it's still within grasp, Ethan. <laughs> All right. So I'm next sure I'll crash again during this. <laughs> Jinxing it right now. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I saw a leak there. Now let me let me click on all of them just so that you know it's not that's not too <laughs> obvious. <laughs> okay. Oh no, I missed it. Next I'm... name. ASMR. <laughs> Man, I don't even know. <sighs> I don't know, man. If this I don't so make them up. Handle, you know? Oh well, uh, some of them I do, obviously. But yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm going fake. I know it's not my turn, but I'm fake. Yeah, I'm going. You fake. go fake. All yeah, right. What do you go, think, Ethan? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, what we in Third Strike call option selects. Okay. And I I saw it go over fight Cade, and I'm going to use that information to my advantage. Maybe he uh, didn't pick that one again. Maybe he didn't, but I'm going to guess fight Cade. Uh huh. And more or less cheat in the game. Um, oh. but yeah. I, I could be very, I could very much be wrong. You could have so, so, faked me with that too, but I am going to guess fight Kate. So it's fight. So you think it's fight Kate, Ethan and Fody, you think it's fight Kate as well? No, I, I'm going fake. Just straight up. You're fake. going fake. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fake. Okay. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, both of you are wrong. It is a yeah. real, it is a real Smash GG username, someone did enter a third strike tournament as ASMR. Where, man, if this dude is like a like a well known player, I'm gonna feel like an asshole. But like, where where are you people hiding? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I've never seen that name. Okay, sorry. No, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> That's why he picked it. He's he's finding people that aren't entering a lot of events. You know, so, I was so confident. Now I'm I mean, they, it can't be too obvious, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes All sense. Right, so we got. So I think that we got three more, right? We did four so far? Yes, yeah. yeah. All right. So it's yeah, still 2-1. Not great. Okay. All right. So it's still anyone's game. All right. So you're ready for the next one, guys? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sar of Lulz. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Dude, these are, these are impossible. These are impossible. It, it literally could be any of them. All the time. They're impossible, yeah. I fought this every time that I've watched. Star it. of Lulz. Oh, Jesus God. Christ! Oh, this is this honestly it's so is good the hardest, though. This is the it hardest is. one you've you've posted. Yeah, it's this so one's good. Difficult. This one's difficult. Oh boy. Um, oh, you guys want to phone a friend? Phone uh, the chat. Phone. The no, chat. I'm not looking at the chat. I'm not looking at the chat. Oh, I no, think. I think that it's real. Okay, so Ethan Ooh. says it's real. And the, this is the reason why I say it's real, because okay. I think that it might not be real, but I also think that Adrian is not going to guess that, and I have to, to get both of these right to win. <laughs> so I literally just have to guess it against my instincts. If his instincts are, are, are you wake-up pairing and fake real and fight? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, doing the, I'm doing the wake-up DP when he knows I'm not going to DP. God That's what it. I'm doing. I'm so I'm guessing fight. real. God damn it. I'm going fight, Cade. Fight, Cade? <laughs> That's probably correct. <laughs> Mike Kate. Okay, okay. So, uh, this is a fight Kate name. Yeah, let's go. Sick. Be in there. I'm, I'm very so <laughs> it, it, I, I believe Ethan has to get these last two right. Oh wait, there are two more. That's right. Okay. All right. You can tie and, it up. And, and, I can up. tie it up. Yeah, yeah. You know. Sick. And so it's it's still possible, and then we'll just play the last one just for kicks. <laughs> sure. All right, all right. I like. Okay. It. All right, but uh, you're you're killing it. Dude, so, I'm, I'm, really I mean, well. you're just I'm, I'm trying, man. You know, you're trying. Yeah, it's good. I love you. Not a fight. I have pulled up right now. No, no. 
You got Fightcade pulled up, and you got like the the jazzy results screen pulled up on Smash. Yeah, I got, I got Smash pulled up, right? <laughs> Cruising through. <laughs> Uh, okay, next one. CG.IDK underscore how underscore to underscore play. Oh, wow. This is bait. This is bait. This Dude. is a fake name. I'm calling it. <laughs> I'm feeling some type of way about this one. I, I, wanted, I really feel like this one could be original, but I, I'm, I'm waffling. I'm waffling. <laughs> Ethan, you go ahead first. I'm saying this is fake. This is, this fake? is bait. This is bait if I've ever seen bait before. Uh, uh, I'm going real. Fuck it. All right. All right. You're real. probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going real. It's just too ridiculous, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. ridiculous. It's pretty yeah. ridiculous. And it is ridiculous, and it is also, in fact, a real Ooh, user name. Yo, we in there? <laughs> I cannot Fody, believe you are top username. tier. So, 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 so technically, Fody has defeated Mashlegs. Damn. And so sorry, Ethan. I'll, I'll be all right. You're going to have to hold that shit forever because I don't know what's the next time you guys are going to play Fake Real or Fight Cage. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. We'll, do, we'll do one more for the road. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, and because, you know, I don't know when's the next time we're going to do this, we're going we're gonna to do one more for the, for the fans. Okay. For the people. Gonna, for the people. Okay. We're going to do one more for the people. All right. You ready? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Last and final name. Dingbat Perwinkle. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> this is a good one. Dingbat Periwinkle is a good name. God. So Dingbat <laughs> Periwinkle. <laughs> uh, Man, this this weirdly sounds like something my brother would have come up with, but I don't know that he did. Um, I'm man, I'm going I fake. Fight, I think Fight Cade. Yeah. This is this is maybe fight Kate. I've been wrong about like every one of them, so I don't know. I'm going, but I'm I, going fake. I feel fight Kate on this name. Mm-hmm. This guy posted some inappropriate shit in the chat. This is this is fight Kate. <laughs> <laughs> so Ethan on the record is on the record saying it's a fight Kate name, and Fody says it's a fake name. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. So, hey, man, you know, there, there, you know, there is such a thing as moral victories in my book. It is indeed a fight game. Damn. Man. Good shit. Either. So Beautiful. final score. I got, I got another point. Wonderful. <laughs> well, dude, you guys did amazing. <laughs> that was awesome. That was good. That was great. Oh, yeah. Again, thank you game. guys. And so uh, final score was 4-2. Oh, oh, you're going oh, to you're gonna have, to, you're gonna have to run it back on fight Cade. First of all, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and take our second and final break. But when we come back, more Mune Experience podcast with the Scrub Series guys, Mash Legs and Fody. Don't go anywhere.
Hey guys, welcome back with more Mutant Experience Yo. Podcast. Scrub Series guys, on the show tonight, Mash Legs and Fody, we are celebrating the two-year anniversary of the very first uh, Jazzy-sanctioned ranking event, which was held by these guys at the Paradigm Grand Prix event in La Crosse, Wisconsin, uh, two That's years crazy. from this date. Crazy. And so, uh, af- so let's talk a little bit about sort of the fallout of, of Paradigm and sure. you guys running sort of the first Jazzy event. Um, you know, what were you guys, do you guys, can you guys kind of describe how you were feeling sort of like right after the event and, you know, just kind of what you guys were thinking about? Yeah, Adrian, start? you want to take that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't so know. Like, you're talking like immediately after, like right after the event ended? Oh yeah. Like, like, you know, like, like, you know, like when you guys were like, what did you guys do right after? And like, when did you guys start like sort of when you when did you guys start like kind of reflecting? Because I know, you know, you guys are, you know, I know that you two are really thoughtful dudes. And so you guys really think, you know, and reflect on stuff. And so oh, yeah. like, wh- when did that kind of start? You know, like, wh- when did that start? Like when you started looking back on kind of what you did and stuff? Man, I think probably like for me, mm-hmm. I, I always go in like right after it happened. Right. So like the day mm-hmm. after, I was already thinking about it, like. You know, we did all these things great, but then it's like, man, next time we do this, in my brain, it's always next time, right? I'm never just going to like yeah. say it's never happening again. So I'm like, man, when we do this next time, we got to do this or we got to do that. So like, it was literally like a day for me before I like started like brainstorming. Yeah, I got home and looked at the stream analytics. Um, yeah, that too. I wanted I to see, we, we look at like, when we run a big tournament, we look at like retention rates and we look at like, if we have a game like Street Fighter Five, right, for instance, the problem we have with Street Fighter Five is with Third Strike, not that we are experts, I wouldn't say we're experts, but we no. know the game pretty well enough and our commentary people know the game pretty well, but we didn't really have anyone for Street Fighter Five there. So we had kind of a, we, we put our goofy guys on for Street Fighter Five. Um, yes, yeah, so we had like no match knowledge on Street Fighter No, Five. And, and we had people like, we had um, Cool Kid 92 was watching our, our tournament and everyone oh, yeah. was like, like looking at who's viewing it and our viewership like went way up and I was like, man, all these guys must either love that like this kind of Chris Who style like talking about hot dogs commentary, or they're like so pissed that people like don't really give a shit about the game that is being right. played. Um, but we had pretty good retention on that. So we basically we we kind of that was one thing we talked about is we're like you know it would be great to in the future be able to kind of vet commentary a little bit more and get yes. guys who are a little more well versed in a certain game. So. Mm-hmm. um but yeah we were always thinking about stuff like after events yeah i mean mm-hmm. i think that night after everything went down we all just kind of you know took a mental break but like i said it was like the day after and i i'm always thinking about this stuff so <laughs> it's like immediate yeah yeah i mean the thing is we were like for adrian and i we were going like like actual hours a day of work for like weeks leading up to that event and then that event we we could get into that space the day before but that was it yeah. So not only did we like set up our stream stuff and set up the, you know, the the stuff that we immediately needed, but we also helped like set up chairs, bring in cabs of paradise oh, yeah. and stuff. So I mean we were there for like basically like forty eight hours straight. So yeah, that was for us time. we definitely like I'm sure we I can't even remember, but I'm sure we just took like a, a week and just kind of decompressed. But like I don't um, think we did scrub series that next week. We probably didn't. I, I mean, there Honestly. there have been times we've taken off, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we we definitely like we've been we've thought about like because I mean there was obviously talk of there being more Paradigm Grand Prix, but right. you know, um, the next year it didn't it didn't work out, and then this year you know obviously. COVID happened, so there may still be more eventually. That's kind of again outside of our court. It's kind of Paul's thing. We didn't really put on. I mean, we didn't put on that event directly. We just kind of helped right. out. But we we were. Um, we, did a lot of stuff there but it wasn't our like paradigm itself wasn't our brainchild like, yeah and and we've discussed doing some of our own kind of smaller event yeah. stuff but yeah More i mean really strike, strike base but yeah for right now we don't know like what the next really big event would be that we would do i mean not that that was like a huge event but it was a few hundred people i mean it was like it was a decent size and uh you know, some event that that's larger production like that, we don't really have a specific one that we'd be involved in thought out yet. But right. I think we would probably it's always do, on our minds, though. Yeah, for real. And I think we would do a lot of things, honestly, very similarly to how we did it. I was pretty happy with most things at Paradigm. Yeah, honestly, mm-hmm. it, for 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 what it was in like kind of the scale that it, it became, 
that we weren't even expecting it to be that many people. Like people were showing up for third strike and we were like, holy shit, we had no idea they were going to show up. Like they didn't pre-reg. They showed up, they drove up super early. Yeah, we had we had like cars of Chicago people just roll yeah. through. We had some guys uh, like Hologram Mike Ross and um, Brian uh, Bathtub Leviathan, they stayed at my place. But like almost everybody else, like Carrie and all those guys, they didn't tell us they were coming. They didn't tell yeah. the, the guys that stayed with me that they were coming. Right. And so we had all of these like a lot of ST guys. Well, also. To be sure. fair, to be fair, that the reason that you probably didn't know about it is maybe Carrie didn't even know about it, <laughs> like oh, until missed, very last minute. Cut out a little bit. Yeah, you cut out a little bit, man. Sorry. Oh, like I, what I was saying is like maybe the reason you didn't know about it is maybe Carrie didn't even know about it. That's very, has, that, that's uh, kind of you know because this seems yeah. like one of these last minute things that the you know sometimes that uh, players will do. Um, but yeah, I was People that was something that I was super stoked with. Like I never in in a million years thought that the chicago crew would show up yeah to it was all event, it you was know pretty, um four hours away from chicago four and a I, half maybe yeah i just kind of assumed it would be a sort of kind of a local thing and that you would get primarily local players but yeah shout outs to the chicago yeah. scene for supporting jazzy from the very beginning you know we had yeah. iowa we had milwaukee we had mm -hmm. minneapolis came out Apple big came time. out yeah, we yeah. had Shout out uh, Guardian Man from Iowa. He came out. Yeah, Minneapolis. Actually, if you take the Street Fighter Five tournament and like Third Strike and ST, and you kind of combine that, mm -hmm. we had like fifty people from Minneapolis drive out. Dude, it was a so, lot of people from Minneapolis. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty crazy. It's crazy. So dude. we were really happy with the turnout, and I think like now that that event went so well, I mean, obviously it's hard to say when when there's you know a two year gap more or less. But if we if we ran another event, I'm I'm confident we could we could blow that one out and and yeah, yeah. you know do a, do a, another good stream. Um, it's just a matter of when that comes. So, thanks. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted to talk about some specific events uh, that kind of sort of stand out in my mind, since obviously today we are celebrating the uh, two year anniversary of the very first Jazzy Ranking event. And so I I think the first time we met in person. Or I met the two of you in person. Was that Frosty? Yeah, 2019. True, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you had you were there obviously for for, for third strike, uh, but you were also helping out in, in, a, in a in a tournament TO capacity. I think you were there with Windy, right? And you guys were kind of and Windy was there. Uh, R.I.P. Windy, of course. Um, and so yeah, you were Corey, you were there. Corey helped out Windy. He was working yeah. for it. Yeah, Corey was actually the task force follows by the way mm -hmm. in the chat. Mm -hmm. He was the one who was like uh, with Windy. Okay. But we we just provided a setup. I think that year mm -hmm. we didn't really provide any much any other help. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that was the first time we met. And so. It was, yeah. <laughs> and so I just wanted. To, I, I I don't like. I kind of don't like talking about these past events because it makes me sad. You know. Yeah. Me but, too. but but how sick was Frosty twenty nineteen? Dude. Like, dog. Yeah. Fucking Texas came out, man. That was sick. I didn't expect them to come dude. out. Dude. Dude. We got to meet cool. Katie and Big Nasty and all the all the Texas guys. Oh, yeah, and Nebraska came out full force. Dude, I think Nebraska. everyone from Nebraska showed up. I think I'm so. trying to think. Yeah, I think. I think they're all there. I think so all the big guys, the big, the the the, the, yeah. the top guys. I think yeah, everyone yeah. in Nebraska showed up. Dude, I want to. I want to just give a quick shout out to Nebraska. I fucking love the Nebraska guys. Like, yeah. Meat is such an enigma, such an interesting guy, and and That's I love my dude having these. Yeah. I've had some some really great like Urian discussions with Cam and and also mm -hmm. like Simon Yu is is a, a really nice guy. So I mm -hmm. much loved in the Nebraska guys. And so, you know, I don't know. Maybe this is just kind of like the old man in me. But like one of the things that I remember so much about Frosty is finally being able to like meet in person people that you have you are accustomed to interacting with almost every day. It's so weird, yeah. You know, did you did you guys feel that too, or was it just me? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I, uh, I think Defend the North, I really felt that, because there's so oh many people that I've never met. Dude, um, Defend the North, I mean, I know we're talking about Frosty right now, but Defend the North... No, no, we can talk about Defend the North, we'll, we'll switch to Defend the North. Yeah, you know? Defend the North, by the way, was super hype. I had such mm -hmm. a great time there, and it was such a whirlwind of a weekend. But, yeah. man, like, kind of piggybacking on what Ethan was saying, it's like, man, you see all these names, you know, in brackets, or you watch the tournaments, or you see them in chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You like you meet them and you're like, oh, this is this is the person, and this is, for me, like, it's really crazy to like really put into perspective. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, it's hard for me. Ethan's probably better at meeting people, but <laughs> it's crazy to see people. <laughs> better better at meeting people. Yeah, dude, like, it's weird as hell for me because like you just see people online all day, and then you're like, oh, they're a real person. It's just bizarre. Yeah, like when I met Venka too, I was like. 
man, this is super weird. Yeah, that, my, that, you know, you know how that, I knew yeah. you were. You know how I knew you were. You you were that dude, Fody. Remember? Go ahead. You know how I. You know how I knew you were that dude at DTN, Fody. Remember, it was. I think it was after the finale. Okay. It was like after, you know, after you know Ryan B had won the finale. Sure. And then like, I just like, I I wanted to just just kind of play a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I but. But obviously, I was busy throughout most of the tournament. So I think I came down hella random time, and, and you were there. And I, I'm trying to remember. There were some other players that were still there. Moan B, I think, was still there. Makoto Mike. Remember that? And we just played. We just played, and, dude. Four in the morning. Tree Tracer, I think, was there. Yeah, yeah it was I like the, it was like 4 a.m. Like, why am I up? Yeah, we were hella like, up, dude. I, was, I have to have that cab for like an hour or two. Yeah. You know? But, but, but it, was, it was cool. You know? That was, that was, that was cool. Yeah, but, it was um, a really great time. Yeah. So anyway, but uh, DTN, right? You know, kind of meeting new people, being able to attach faces with names and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, there's there's so many people in our scene, you know, that are great people. But, you know, who are some of the people that kind of stood out to you in terms of, you know, people that you had only known online, but then, you know, were able to kind of finally meet? Like, who are some of the more memorable people that you say? So... Uh, Right off the bat list. here, this is uh, I, I remember Harsimus because like he had been in our chat every Sunday, like he's always dude, just chilling. I was, I was always hanging out, and like I met him, I was like, "Holy shit, this is Harsimus! Hell yeah, dude!" Like and I we had so him in our team. team. Yeah, and then he was in, he played teams with us too, which is really sick. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead, Ethan. I think you're gonna. Oh, um, so I guess uh, we have a bunch for defend the North, but I, I'll maybe let Adrian handle a lot of the defend the North ones, but um. We actually, I think the first time we really had this happen where we like got to meet all these people was um, the combo breaker that year. Uh, we had like Lance and Exo made it out and Btran, mm -hmm. and oh, we yeah. had to meet all those guys. And we also got to meet Frankie, and yeah, and dude. all those guys were <clears throat> were super nice to us. And and you know, it's it's kind of like at that point we had met, you know, the Nebraska guys. We had met guys with like a storied history in, in tournaments, but I think meeting like Frankie and Exo and these guys that, you know, everyone has such a reverence for and are, are such like, you know, legendary figures. And we had met you as well, kind of in that, that group. And it's like, you think that there's a little shred in your, of, of doubt in your mind that you're like, you know, this guy might just be an asshole. And like, cause I mean, we're, we're like some random people that definitely can't play even one iota as well as they can. And like, right, right. they can easily brush us off and not want to talk to us. But every one of those guys came up to us and said, hey, you know, great to meet you. I love watching the stream. And, and it was yeah, awesome like, getting to meet people and, and having them, you know, respect us in a way that is different from the way we respect them. But, you know, still have that mutual respect with, with a lot of people. And we felt that at Defend the North, too. But I wanted to shout out those guys because I had met them at Combo Breaker ahead of Defend the North. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, and then we met a ton of people at Defend the North. I mean... Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just it's just so hard to even like pinpoint people at Defendant North that were like it was just crazy to meet everybody. It was everyone. I, yeah, I will say that like, and this is just coming from me. Uh, it was a bit intimidating to like have to scream people's names across the room for people like legendary players that like you just read about or see about on like oh like at DTN right? Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, hey, get your ass to the setup. Like, where are you at? You know, like yeah. I'm screaming yeah. at this dude who's playing the game for 20 years. I'm this new dude. I've been in the game. I've been in the scene for like two years. I'm just yelling at this dude. I don't yeah, know. I had to, I had to hold Justin Wong's match in teams, and I had to tell him. And he was playing other game, other tournaments, and I was like, "Sorry, bro, we're holding your match." <laughs> <laughs> it felt very strange. Just be like, Justin, I, I'm sorry to tell you, we're holding your Justin, match. Justin, this yep. is your bracket runner match legs. Yeah, this is the third I, time I, that I've left a message. The, Could you? The uh... dumbest thing I've ever had to say was <laughs> I go up to Justin and be like, "Yeah, man, you're gonna have to. I can't help you here." <laughs> uh justin i had to put you in losers sorry yeah i didn't do that your like, match or... <laughs> didn't have the dq justin but... <laughs> right it's funny that's funny that's funny so uh, it, it is weird though like being a new player and having uh -huh. to part of like i mean we we had kind of a a staff role to some capacity at, at mm -hmm. defend the north right and having to kind of like tell I don't want to say real players, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Having to tell real players, yeah, you know, you watch and you're like, yeah. trying to, you know, having to tell them to, to like, you know, hold this, like, <laughs> it's very <laughs> strange. 
Like, like I had to just be like, hey, Ahmed, you got to get here for your match. <laughs> it's just very weird to do that. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone ever thought this, but I, I sometimes felt like, man, this guy's probably like, who the fuck is this dude telling me to like... Exactly, exactly. Because right <laughs> we're so brand new, I was like, oh, shit. But no, everyone was super cool, you know? Everyone's super nice. Everyone's super, you know, respectful. It was, it was yeah. great. So uh, Donka in the chat just read my mind. You know that's why that's oh, why we're you know that's why he's such a good third strike player, right? He he read my mind. He knew where yeah, that's part going. of it. And so I wanted the next thing I wanted to ask you about was the commentary. You know, you had an opportunity to commentate a little bit at Defend the North. Um, yeah. You know, clearly you guys had commentated before. You have your own stream, but um, you know, sure, what was yeah. that like for you guys? That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll notice something about me that everything is just like crazy intimidating right off the bat but uh once mm -hmm. once i sat down like it was it was fine like donka made it really really approachable he was like super good dude to, to commentate with shout out to donka man i see you in the chat bro mm -hmm. but, so like he made it really easy and like you know i think it was uh art and cruise were sitting by on the at the stream station and they, they're super mm -hmm. chill too like even though like i'm this brand new guy coming up you know they probably have never seen me they've never watched my stream you know like and they were just super supportive like you know just like I was just so supposed to be there. Like it was sick. I don't know. Well, you were supposed to be there. <laughs> right. I know, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. I get you though. Get for you third though. strike, like it's such a like it's got so much history to it. Like you almost don't want to like you don't want to like taint it, right? Like you don't want to be like that guy who like says some crazy shit on a third strike stream and fuck it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Exactly. Well, just the facts, guys. Remember, just the facts. Just yeah, the facts. Yeah. 100, dude. yeah. So let's think just... of a uh, think of designing a just the facts jazzy T-shirt. I'd That'd be that. sick, man. I would buy it. Jazzy colors. It just says just the facts. Yeah. So, um, Ethan, forgive me, but I, uh, I, I did commentary forgot. with KD. Yeah, KD, you did KD commentary. And, and that KD. was actually super nice because I already knew KD. So mm -hmm. for Adrian, like, he was probably going in like, oh man, I don't know Donka that well. I've watched him do commentary at um, Co-op Co Cup. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, that's a different thing. Right? Like, I already knew KD. We had been talking that whole weekend. I mean, we had been working together. So, and like running brackets and stuff so for us it was super natural just because we had already you know had that camaraderie but i think for adrian and donka hit it off and were able to do a great job on commentary i, I think just because they're yeah. both so approachable and so open to working with people that it, it worked out pretty well yeah in fact we i think like it was either right after commentary or shortly after we went and grabbed a slice of pizza right after like me and donka hang out, hung out after that like it was sick like <laughs> he's super nice dude like mm -hmm. what ended up like what was this, like beginning to be like a super intimidating moment for me that was like a really chill and just like, really awesome thing to do. <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah, and if, if anybody else that's newer gets an opportunity to do commentary or wants to apply yeah. for commentary, I've applied a few places. Um basically everyone's like that. Like everyone I've really met and anybody that's done commentary to any capacity is like largely pretty cool and like approachable and willing to, you know, hang out and and you know, not treat you poorly for not knowing the game as well as them or anything like that. Right, right, totally. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the last thing I wanted to ask you about DTN is, you know, for, more from a player standpoint. Um, I know that, you know, you and, and, and you got and you guys just really went above and beyond in terms of, you know, helping me out at DTN. Um, but it just as far as just, you know, kind of alluding back to the story I said when I came down at 4 a.m. and I saw... Fody playing, you know, and, and this is a question to both of you guys. Like, you know, in terms of just playing, like, did you know, w w was it more focused on kind of the the TO side of things, or you know, were you really trying to get in some games with some of these uh, really great players? Dude, like, I personally was like really trying to play, and we it was so tough. Mm -hmm. I know that like we really needed to get our rest to focus, yeah, and like because the next day, like. I think the day that I got most of my games is like the night that we got there. It was already like you we were rolling up at like midnight, I think. And I was like, that's true. Yeah. Why am I going to sleep? Why sleep? Like, there's all these players. I'm never going to be in the room with all these players again. I'm staying up. And so, like, for me, it was like really important to like just get games. Like, I might have not have been in like the best mental state at that point, you know, being on flights all day and like delays and shit. But like, Mm -hmm. No, that was really because you did have some issues, right? You did have some flight issues. Yeah, yeah man. Don't even you're supposed to be there a day earlier. You were trying to go to next level and everything. You had delayed 36 hours our flight. Man, oh, God, it was terrible. like the way you planned the trip. The itinerary was godlike, but it just yeah. you know obviously it all is contingent on yeah. You know, you know what's crazy? Beyond our control is like it was delayed because of some thunderstorm that I don't even think ended up happening. 
Like, yeah, that's true. It, it just that's delayed it. True. And then we had to stay home for like 36 hours. And we also had to drive and, like an hour and a half away to fly out of a different airport to actually yeah, Just to make it in time. Yeah, yeah it was it wild. Was a disaster, dude. Yeah. But had you gotten there on time, though? Yeah, then we would have played a bunch of games. It would have been, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, like I said, we were trying to go to next level and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it kind of was, was not the best. But, I mean, I was responsible. I went to bed, but I got some games in. I mean, I was mm -hmm. I was happy to, to get some games in. And for, yeah. more, for me, more more than anything else, it was about kind of, like you said, solidifying a lot of those relationships that were really online-only relationships. And, like, mm -hmm. for instance, um, shout out to Steelhammer. Uh, he had been working with me on Urian because I had just switched over to Urian. And he had been teaching me a bunch of stuff. And so I had been talking to him, like, several days a week for months leading up to that. So, like, that was another cool thing is getting to meet people that you've been, like, playing sets with. And, like, people right. that are, like, a part of your life to some extent that you've never met is, is it's very mm -hmm. weird. You don't experience yeah, that with a lot of other things. It's bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, you know, speaking of people that you interact with online, okay, um, I think now uh, has come the time for uh, an age-old tradition here on the Moon Experience podcast. Oh, let's go, let's go. And so, speaking of uh, people that you play online, uh, it's uh, time. It's time for uh, this uh, edition's uh, this episode's edition of uh, Pack It Up. And oh, so, I'm so excited to get to do uh, that. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Pack It Up, uh, basically what I do is I scour the internet for some of the more uh, unique examples of Dirt Strike gameplay. Unique. And, uh, you know, again, there is nothing positive about what we're currently going through. But if there is any kind of silver lining, that silver lining is that, um, you know, what once was a job that took uh, a certain amount of time has is, is it takes a lot less time now. <laughs> let's, just, let's just go. Let's just put it, put put it that way. I can imagine. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know me about pack it up. It's a learning tool. It's 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 a way for you guys to remember what not to do. And so, without further ado, guys, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, run this uh, this episode's edition of Pack It Up. You guys ready? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready, ready, ready right, and raring right, to go. I've been waiting right. for this. All right, you're waiting. Okay. Oh wait, no, not that's not fake real life. I'll, I'll, I'll win again too. Yeah, we'll play again. Yeah. Okay, so pack it up. Shout out to Dirt Master for the theme song for uh, Pack It Up. Hell yeah. Nominee number one. I almost forgot about this. Okay. So yeah, I mean, there's a reason why you use tire <laughs> slaughter, right, Ethan? In yeah, case I mean, someone shore used from half the screen, and then yeah, you, you could, did. you know, you could do the optimal punish. So big uh, yeah. damage. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is what happens, right? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> weird to watch. That's a, that's a <laughs> that sure you was nowhere near him. Uh, okay. So I mean, well, that sucks. But then don't comp <laughs> don't so compound the issue. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. I, I, can't, I, gotta, I gotta unpack that. I don't yeah, there's yeah, a lot. Going that's, on that, here. There's a lot. This is like a multifaceted. Big Nasty will appreciate this. Oh, He's no. got the right idea. the issue, you know? It's like he never stopped churning. Right. Uh, well, you know. I've seen this one. That's not, that's not great, Mustard Back. Sorry. Um, you know, here's the thing. This is what. And, and Fody, you're the Dudley main, right? Yes. Like, you don't even need to parry it. Uh, you, you don't just get... EX machine gun blow, right? <laughs> you, you know, you, you don't even need to parry it, but well, you know, it is what it is. What oh. are you gonna do? Nominee number four. So uh, this Sean's feeling frisky here. Decides to do a little shenanigans, but forgets that uh, <laughs> forgets that he's Sean. Right. <laughs> and so uh, a little cheeky here. Oh my goodness. And uh, <laughs> KKZ. No, <laughs> so, for some reason the the basketball in the freeze frame is yeah. okay. <laughs> Nominee number five. I mean, uh, even my necro's not this bad. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, we've mean, all had that happen to us before. I mean, oh it's... Goodness. Wow. This is, That's part of learning Third Strike. This is... <laughs> this is, this is Yo, that, that's a lot, too, though. That. That's a lot of feet. That's a lot of stomping. Yeah, that makes you me know? so angry. I, that that <laughs> cheese from Alex is... is yeah. Is, that's... It's either yeah. two or five for me, man. That, that, the I think it's two for me. Two is ridiculous. Yeah. Two yeah. for me, for sure. Yeah, like it's okay. He he supered <laughs> his blocks, but then he's like, "Yo, I'm online, right? So let me just DP real quick." And yeah. then the dude, oh my goodness! And then he woke up. 
Oh, God. Yes, exactly. Like, he bailed himself out of his mistake because the punish button was too slow. <laughs> um, right, right. But yeah, like, it, it's so good because both players have some insight there. It's not like, you know, someone just is totally brainless, right? Like, the Hugo well, player is like, I got to punish this, which is right, smart. Right. And then the Ken player is like, I'm, I'm fucking Ken. <laughs> I'm the gonna, neutral EX Tatsu? Oh, the new ex, neutral jump EX Tatsu? <laughs> EX neutral? Oh my god. Oh yeah, that god. one was a little interesting. But yeah, I, I would pick two. I think two is pretty interesting. Oh, I, you know what I think he was trying to do? He was trying to do... Uh, uh, never mind. I don't, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I was going to say some shit. I was going to say some shit. No, no, okay, okay, okay. Well, well, speaking of saying some shit... Ken Masters. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ken Masters. Ken Masters. Ken Masters. Um, so I speaking, combos, I don't know. Yeah, speaking of online justice, uh, you know, we, we talked earlier in the podcast, Fody, about how, you know, serious, uh, you, you also, Ethan, how serious you guys are about playing on the, you know, the right hardware, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. you know, before you, we, uh, you know, I don't know if this is public knowledge or not. So if it, it's not, I'm sorry, but no, I, can, I think, I, I think a few months before the pandemic, uh, your, your scene or the scrub series guys, uh, you guys have cabs now. Right, we do. Or yeah, one of, one you, of, guys Tron 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 one of you guys have calves now. Yeah, Tron Swanson does. Shout so out, you guys Tron. are really, yeah, Tron Swanson's cap. So, you guys are getting you're, you're, you're going in. Oh, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. so with that said, and then after you know, obviously the pandemic hit, and now have you know, really only having to play online, how's that been for you guys? Torture, it's <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, it's a lot like. They're like blocks away from my house and I can't go to my friend's house and mm -hmm. because of a pandemic is terrible. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the, the Frankie statement from last week was, I think, really echoes where I'm at. Like, I do play online. Um, Frankie doesn't really like to play online and I don't love it, but, you know, I accept that that's where we're at. But yeah, something about just like getting to play offline with people. If, if you have an offline scene, once you once you experience that, it's really hard to go back because... Right. You don't get to talk about your matches. You don't get to have those people get hype around you when you get something really sick. Um, and so much of that really solidifies, like, so much of Third Strike for me is the scene and the people. And it's hard to play online by yourself. And I know a lot of people feel that way. Um, but, you know, there's when there's not an option, you kind of just have to do it more or less. I know, I know that sounds kind of strange. I mean, but. Yeah, dude, I, I really should be playing more online. It's just... For me as a person, I'm so like, I need if I'm gonna be learning from something, I need to eliminate all possible yeah. like wrongdoings, right? So like even like there's like this internet connection, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, did I fuck up because of that, or like you know was my punish timing on 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 point, or was it like the internet? Yeah, connection? right. Like, I didn't notice. Like I can't I can't bring myself to like deal with that on a daily basis. Like I I do like to play online sometimes, but I, I'm definitely more offline at heart you I'm know an offline player too it's, i, I just spend a lot of time in training mode now yeah it's hard and i've never been a huge online player in any capacity really for any game so it's not like i'm being like a snob either you know like i'm not like Ugh, third strike only offline like nah dude like i won't play anything online really like outside of an mmo you know what i mean mm -hmm. if something, like requires any amount of timing or accuracy like no way yeah, yeah i mean i don't think i don't think anyone's obligated to play on anything no, no, I hear you. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if you even have to, you know, make excuses or, or anything like that. You know, I, I don't think it's necessary. But you know, you you touched on something, uh, Ethan, the training mode, right? Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, as new players, you know, talk about how you've been using training mode to kind of, you know, help you guys try and get better uh, at this game. Um. Well, me personally, I. When I first started playing the game, almost mm -hmm. all of my play was offline. Yeah. Not, and it was almost all like versus mode, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I just played Chun Li and I was just like, you know, playing Third Strike. And then I started working on hit confirms and drilling that. And I spent a little more time in arcade mode, but they're in training, mode, sorry. But then when I switched to Urian, because so much of his stuff is so specific and requires you to develop a bunch of a different muscle memory. I had to, I was forced to spend a lot of time in training mode. And now I've kind of like, you know, accustomed myself to that, especially now that I don't have as much motivation to play online. So I've been uh, spending a lot of time just like drilling, you know, tackle, tackle, headbutt or unblockables or, you know, 
a bunch of things. Uh, and obviously that's specific to my character, but I do think that it's important because you're kind of at a point, and I know Adrian and I have actually recently talked about this, where your brain knows what to do. Like you're in a good headspace and you know, like I've watched videos. I know this is unsafe. I know frame data. I know I can punish this, but your hands can't catch up to where yeah, your, your brain wants to be. Yeah. yeah. And you have to try and eliminate that as quickly as possible. And it's always going to be a factor, but anything you can do to, if you're, if you're a smarter player than you are physically, that's, I think that's a good spot to be because it lets you know what to improve on. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you also have to worry about putting yourself in the danger of spending too much time on that and only being like, okay, I know my combo, so I'm not going to think about right, right. what I'm doing. But mm -hmm. So I think like initially, and this is going to be kind of weird to say, because I should be spending time in training mode more than I am now, but like when I first started playing Dudley, um, I really just drilled out combos. Like I didn't even like do anything like, mm -hmm put the, the dummy on block. Like, I was just like, I need to learn this execution. I need to drill it out. Like, I need to see what his combos feel like, right? So, like, for a while there, I was just doing that, like, every day, just, like, drilling out Dudley stuff. But now, like, I feel like it's to a point where I need to just play games and know what those combos feel like in an actual pace of a match. Because, in context, right? Right, because, like, you can, you can set your dummy to, you know, random block all you want, and you can sit there and drill out hit confirms, which is great, and I do that sometimes. But, like, it always feels different in a pace of a match for me. For real, yeah. So, so for like, sure. right now, like, I haven't really been doing a whole lot of, like, just sitting in training mode. Like, I just want to, if I'm going to play Third Strike, this is kind of maybe going to do some, some crazy shit. But, like, I'll sometimes just go into arcade mode if I don't feel like interacting with people. And I'll mm -hmm. let, like, the CPU do some crazy shit, and then I'll, like, react to it, right? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, even though it might be some shit I don't even see in a match, like, I've just, just to, like, test my reaction times in a pace of, like, a moving thing. It doesn't even need to be a real person. Like, I just want to see a thing move at me and react to, like, whatever it does, right? That's actually really that, effective, though. A lot of Japanese like, players sharpen, have done that. Yeah, I think it might sharpen something at some point, right? Like, it just, like, repeating that over and over. Mm -hmm. I don't so, know. Speak, so speaking of Japan, uh, you know, where we're... Oh, Running a little short on time, but I wanted to just talk about this last thing. Oh, snap. Um, you know, the two of you, uh, uh, have, have either of you been to Japan? No. We, nope. we were going to go next year, but now I don't know if we will because yeah. I don't know if we'll be allowed to. Well, I mean, that's yeah. kind of my question, you know, sort of what's the next, uh, what's, what's in the future for, for the Scrub Series, guys? Um, I, I want to play Co-op Cup. I want to mm -hmm. enter Co-op Cup. I don't think that I will win Co-op Cup, but I think that... I would love to have the program with my name and my friends' names in it. Yeah, be so I, thick, there's man. nothing wrong with that. There's nothing yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to be there, man. I. I the All goal right. is so, always so, in Japan. Okay, yeah. so 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 super. Well, we're going to end on a controversial note. Oh, Let's damn. do it. Okay. Let's do it. So so you say you want to join Co-op Cup, Ethan. Obviously, it's not a singles tournament. It's a five v five team not. tournament. So you're gonna to have to have some teammates. I will. And so I want the two of you to give me Team Scrub Series right now. Oh. At this moment, if you had to assemble Team Scrub Series right now to represent you in Cooperation Cup, who would who would they who would be on Team Scrub Series? Bro, I'm gonna give be... it to me, guy. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! So Let's so go. okay. So first of all, you, you, the two of you are on it, right? For sure. So, well, yeah, so you only really have three spots left. So, so I want to be doing. I want to make one just quick note about this. Okay. I think in this scenario, it's mm -hmm. going to be only people who are like Scrub Series people, right? So, like, my, for instance, like, Ruben, we've talked to Ruben, like, he's probably going to go and play with us. But I'm not going to put him on my team for this because it's going to be Team Scrub Series. So, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I okay. think, really, Ruben would probably be on our team. But in okay. this example, I'm not going to put Ruben on our team. I, okay. I have my answer, but I'll let, I'll let Ethan go first. So, okay, I think Ethan, so what's your we, we have kind of this core group that we've been playing with. And, mm -hmm. like... I would say Tron Swanson and, and Wade would be a lock because we've, okay. we've played with them the most. Like if we do like a, a super small, like just like a two person or three person yeah. gathering or something. And you need a chun. Happens. You need a chun. Yeah. You need and, a chun. And, and also like, uh, yeah, yeah, it helps that Andy plays high tier characters, but, um, right. <laughs> but so, yeah. So I like I how Ethan was, said that in like this weird, like it, it seemed like there was like, you said that in this kind of like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I was just too. I just, old. No, I just fucked up and went down the tier list. I'm an okay, idiot. Just, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think those four for sure. I'll let Adrian pick the the last. 
Dude, no. So I'm I'm on that that same wavelength. It's got to be okay. Andy. It's got to be Wade. And I think our fifth is going to be Mark, man. Mark. Yeah, I was going to say Mark. Shout out because, to Seth Dark Mage, man. Because like as much as I love Dane, we've been playing with Dane a lot too. But uh-huh. he's yeah, he doesn't have that third strike love. He wouldn't go to Japan. I know no, Dane would be like. It, not like really playing it right yeah yeah so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bench game now do we have do you guys have enough members for a scrub series like you know how like nwo had nwo hollywood and nwo wolfpack do you oh, have yeah. enough players to assemble a, a a junior varsity scrub series yeah i mean that it. phrasing but we could have another team we could yeah, have yeah. a second team yeah <laughs> yeah we could have we could probably have like three teams of people who <laughs> who have played at our events yeah, that's probably um, if we had to form like three teams, we could probably do it. But yeah, if you're if, up everyone, right? From like yes, exactly. Like a- Scrub stable, <laughs> the dungeon of doom. <laughs> exactly, man. The corporate ministry <laughs> for you wrestling fans out there. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we've come to the end of the podcast, guys. Again, uh, you know, I, I, words cannot describe the, the the level of gratitude I have for you guys. You know, and 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 you're you know sort of getting into third strike, helping out with Jazzy, and just, you know, being yourselves. And, you know, you guys are getting better, both as players and TOs. And uh, I just wish you the best of luck in the future. Um, you know, and so is there anything you guys wanted to say before we uh, get out of here? Um, um, Adrian, why don't you say your piece first, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, say something. I was just going to th- say thanks for having us on, man. And, like, thanks for, you know, reaching out to us and making us, you know, like letting us be such a big part of, like, you know, jazzy and DTN and everything. It's been it's been a real treat. That's um, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, just like shout out to all my friends. Shout out to everybody who plays third strike with us. You know what I mean? Like, you know what it is. Everybody in the chat already knows what it is. <laughs> they know what it is. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. So I I was gonna say a lot of things Adrian said, but I think one other thing is um you know like I said before we're we're not top players. We don't have super high level content, but you know we we kind of you know moved into our niche. And I think it's important to just say that if you're a new Third Strike player or if you're casually interested in Third Strike or if you're casually interested in another game, mm-hmm. you can totally do it. You can totally learn it. I, I'm i an idiot. I have terrible execution. I don't know anything. I have no fighting game background. I've, like, learned how to play Urian to some capacity. And, like, mm-hmm. I think the other thing is I want to shout out someone like, like take out, take, like, Jandor, right? I'll, I'll shout out one person directly. Mm-hmm. Jandor, what he's doing um, for you know, I would say minor third strike players, people under mm-hmm. 18. He's got a discord running. He's got tournaments running. He's streaming. I mean, he's yeah. doing a lot of the same things we were doing. He's taking a game that seems like an insurmountable, like super challenging task and, and just running head first at it. And I think, you know, I'd love to see more people do that. I think if we can yeah. do anything, it's to set the example that you can have an offline scene. You can have a stream that people watch. You can become a decent third strike player even from nothing, even with no existing scene, no existing background or execution or anything. Like, yep. uh, mm-hmm. And the third strike scene is is basically um, totally enabled that for us because everyone's been so nice and, and so um, uh, welcoming to, to us as new players. So I want to thank all of you guys for, for being cool to us and being cool to the other next generation coming up. So Yeah, man, for real. Definitely, definitely awesome, awesome. So before we uh, really get out of here, guys, um, just wanted to let you know that the uh, Third Strike content is continuing over at twitch.tv slash Vankabot because in just about 20 minutes, uh, live on his stream, uh, he's going to be broadcasting a very special Bruise Day Tuesday Jazzy Circuit Retrospective Edition. And so for those of you uh, who uh, are unfamiliar with the Jazzy Retrospective, uh, basically for the last six weeks, we've been uh, asking you guys to vote on what you think are the best or the top eight Jazzy Circuit matches of our short history. And so the top eight, we're going to be uh, watching those top eight ma- at matches. We might have some uh, a special guest or two during the stream. I'll be over there. The Scrub Series guys will be there. Katie Alpha will be there. You know, once we uh, once we play that Green Ranger flute, guys, Rico, yeah, my stop by. Uh, Got to play the Green Ranger flute. Shout <laughs> yeah, out to Rico, DJ Isco. And so um, it's going to start around 9 o'clock. And so please definitely follow Venka um, as well as the Scrub Series, guys. And so, uh, yeah, stick around for the Jazzy Circuit Retrospective. It should start eh, around 9 o'clock. And so definitely uh, stick around for more uh, Third Strike. So, guys, once again, thank you for coming on to the podcast. 
Thank um, you for having us, man. Thank you. Yes. And so we're going to go ahead and sign off there. Again, please follow these guys at Scrub Series, at Mash Legs, at 43SN. Also, follow me at Mutant XP uh, if you have any feedback, if you want to see certain guests on the podcast, you know, tweet me out or let me know. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. But again, coming up at 9, twitch.tv slash Fankabot. What a thanks for right now. Go follow that man. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> get over there. Right. Yeah, well, I'll be there. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. So take it easy and enjoy the rest of your night. Peace out. See you guys.